Good evening and welcome to day five here at the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. Now set it for the last four nights and I will say it again, you are in for a real treat of finals and semi-finals this evening. Now just to name a few, we have Jazz Carling going out in the women's 800 metre freestyle event. She had a great heat, so I'm really looking forward to seeing her perform in the final. Now we have the Fast and Furious, the jewel in the pool. It's Adam PT versus Ross Murdoch in the men's 50 metre breaststroke. And we see her yet again this week, this event. It's Francesca Halsall going out in the women's 100 metre freestyle. Now she will be chased, so that's a final not to be missed. So enjoy this evening's semi-finals and finals. We're kicking off here at six o'clock. Don't forget Sky Sports 2 will be taking all the action as well at six o'clock. That is not to be missed. So now it's over to Bob Ballard to see his results from this morning's heats. The penultimate day of competition of the British Gas Swimming Championships began with the 200 backstroke for men. Though James Gollard now, Chris Walker Hebben has opted not to do it anymore, so he needs someone to begin a new era for Britain in this competition. Is Charlie Balderson that man? Before today, he'd never broken the two minute barrier, but he did in heat number two, clocking 158.88, the fastest time. The quest to find the fastest Briton in the pool has begun. The heats of the 50 metres freestyle contain most of the names of the swimmers who've done the 100. The top three speed merchants from that final, Adam Brown, James Disney May and Ben Proud, who produced the fastest time of the morning, but over half a second shy of his best time of 22.01. The women's 50 metres backstroke contained many of the swimmers you'd expect, and in Fran Halsall, one you wouldn't. She had the third fastest time of the morning, but Lauren Quigley was close to breaking the minute mark at the 100. She was quickest in heat number four, 28.34, marginally quicker than Georgia Davis. There was a new personal best for Georgia Barton in the final heat of the 200 metres butterfly. She knocked a third of a second off her previous best to clock 211.41, the fastest of the morning ahead of Hannah Miley. The slog of the 1500 metres freestyle was undertaken by 30 swimmers across four heats and it was the open water swimmers who were to the fore in the fastest heat. Olympian Dan Fogg and 10K specialist Jack Burnell matched each other stroke for stroke for much of that race. In the end, it was the older Loughborough swimmer outshining his training partner with a 1519.58. And we witnessed the fastest swim in the world this year in a women's 50 metres breaststroke swim. Olympic 100 metres champion Ruta Melitite from Plymouth Leander went sub 30 but couldn't quite challenge her world record. That will be for another day. That was what happened this morning. Welcome to the evening session here at the Tall Cross Pool in Glasgow. Bob Ballard and Ross Davenport guiding you through the next couple of hours of competition. We'll have junior finals, we'll have senior finals. We will have a lot of new personal bests, hopefully a British record, English record, Scottish record and Welsh record somewhere along the way. And we'll start with the junior finals. We have two of those. We have the junior 200 meters backstroke final to start off with and here come the protagonists in lane number one it's Oliver Jeremy of Hamilton Waterlooville two is Thomas Roberts of Nova Centurion three Niall O'Leary of Abingdon Vale Adam Taylor of City of Sunderland goes in lane number four Archie Mitchell of the city of Sheffield who was also involved in the uh, longer events this morning goes in number five six Fraser Spooner of Swim West Lothian goes in six Oliver Goodhue Plymouth Leander in seven and in lane number eight it will be Daniel Cross following that we'll bring you the junior 800 meters freestyle final for women because we have the senior final of that to come second up after the men's 200 meters backstroke. Ross Davenport is on the recovery trail from the London Marathon yesterday. Feeling a bit better this afternoon, Ross? Yeah, I feel a little bit better this afternoon, Bob. This morning was a bit of a struggle sitting up here. The legs were a little bit sore, but looking forward to tonight's action. And it's going to be a great event to kick us off. You've already mentioned that Archie Mitchell did the 1500 meters this morning as well as the 200 back, and that was in the 200 back final, so... 
Busy boy. Yeah, very busy boy indeed. And set a new personal best in the 200 backstroke this morning, as did Fraser Spooner in lane number six and Adam Taylor in lane number four. So uh, some quickening times, some faster times that had been previously entered by Adam Taylor, by Archie Mitchell and by Fraser Spooner in four, five and six. That's where you would think the winner is probably going to come from, but there have been a few upsets already this week. And uh, going like a bullet from a gun straight off lane number four, Adam Taylor. Taylor watching for those outside smokers because that's where they've often been coming from early in the race. But Adam Taylor it is who's uh, setting the pace in this one. Fantastic start from Adam Taylor in lane number four. He was the first into the water and he took the whole 15 meters underwater and he's leading at the first 50 in 28.52. So he's just over half a second ahead of Niall O'Leary in lane number three next to him. Pretty good start, very good turn, and keeping the momentum going, keeping the stroke rate going, making sure he's as streamlined as he possibly can with that uh, body as upright and as on the surface of the water as he can manage it. Adam Taylor still leading and leading considerably at the halfway stage, leading by two seconds from Niall O'Leary now, and that turn third place to Fraser Spooner, and Oliver Goodhue is in fourth. That's a huge advantage at the halfway mark. He's now got 75 five meters to hang on to this lead. It does look like from our position that the rest of the field are starting to make inroads onto his lead, but he looks like he's already broke the field and it's up to the rest of the field to try and close that gap onto him. As we approach the final turn, he's going to turn onto his front and hopefully use as much of the underwater phase as he possibly can. You are allowed to go 15 meters and he went about six, seven meters there. It does look like the rest of the field is starting to close in on him. Adam Taylor has set the trend, set the pace, and is now maybe starting to pay for it just a little bit, but he is holding on. The rest are coming back to him, and have they got enough room to overhaul him, enough time, enough of this 50-meter forward toll cross to reel him in? I don't think they have, and he's going to take it all the way to the wall. That is front running of the highest order from Adam Taylor. It's going to be a very good time. Personal best for him as well in 2.04.35. Second place going to Niall O'Leary and Fraser Spooner in third. So the winner from Sunderland, second Abingdon Dale, and third is West Lothian. Time of the winner, 2.04.35 for Adam Taylor of the uh, City of Sunderland. So that's two PBs in the space of a day. Yeah, fantastic swimmy led from the very first moment all the way to the end. And even though the rest of the field did start to catch him up towards the end, he had done enough over the opening 100 metres. He was two seconds ahead at the halfway mark and finishing around about one and a half seconds ahead at the finish. So fantastic swim, a great swim to open the evening up and uh, another PB for, for him and he'd be mightily pleased with that. Looking to get them down into the two-minute range. That's going to be a little while in coming for the swimmers that you saw in that race, but they are getting there, and most of them have improved significantly from their morning swim and indeed from their previous swims coming into Glasgow. So first of the two junior finals will bring to you at the beginning of the session. There are some more junior finals to come after we have completed the senior program. Next up, the longest one in the women's program. It is the 800 meters freestyle. It's tough for the seniors. How tough is it for the juniors doing the 800 freestyle? Yeah, it is, it's a tough event. It's one of the, the hardest events in the program. We talk a lot about the, the hard events, and you know, the 400 medley, 200 fly, 800 free, and the 1500 free for men. And a lot of these swimmers will do all of those events, so they're they're looking for, for punishment. Um, so they won't see me doing the longer distances. I think we did have the revelation from you that you did do once, and I think you remember once, and probably your body is still aching from it, that uh, 1500 short course. Yeah, that's right. And I, that was right at the start of my, I think I was 18, and it was short course, and there's a, I'm telling you now, there's, there's a lot of turns on the 1500 short course, and you do get dizzy, so how soft to, to these swimmers, it's obviously a little bit different for the women, only do the 800. Well, they can actually do the 1500, but it's not an Olympic event. This is a world championship. So these swimmers will be looking to, to show the selectors um, what they can do and the powers that be at British Swimming that these are the future for this event. Obviously, Rebecca Addington has, has retired a couple of years ago and she was the queen of British Swimming. So can somebody in this field take on her mantle in the next couple of years or even six years going into Tokyo? What we need, Ross, is somebody called Rebecca because you have to be called Rebecca to be a British record holder. Rebecca Cook, Rebecca Adlington. We don't have a Rebecca in here, so we should change their name quickly. 
In one, it is Meg Finnan of South Lanarkshire. Two is Sophie Evans, Swansea University, representing Wales. Holly Hibbert of Southport, English swimmer, as is Georgia Coates of City of Leeds in four. Five, Chloe Finch of City of Birmingham. In six, Isabel Griffiths, also of City of Birmingham. City of Newcastle, represented by Georgia Darwin in seven. And Jennifer King of North Ayrshire in lane number eight. 16 lengths of this toll cross ball. So four PBs this morning for the swimmers in four, five, six, and three. Holly Hibbert closest to us in three, but it is the centre lanes showing very prominently. But so, so too is Georgia Darwin early on, and she's got the lead at 50. Probably too early to think that uh, maybe she will be the winner at the end in lane 7 7, but she's setting the pace anyway. 29.76 after the first 50. Yeah, just under a tenth ahead of second place from her. But we expect the lead to change quite a few times in this event. It is at the minute Georgia Darwin in lane number seven from the city of Newcastle that's doing the early running, but it is very, very close between four or five swimmers, and it does actually look now that it is going to be Georgia Coates from the city of Leeds that will turn first. No, actually, in fact, Georgia Darwin is still first, but only just so. Expect a tight race and expect it to change a couple of times before we get to the 800 meter mark. 15 years of age is Georgia, has already done open water in 2K, uh, 2.5K that is, and 5K will be stepping up, I'm sure, in due course to the 10, bit too early for a junior to be doing that, but uh, she is an 800, 1500, 2.5 and 5K swimmer, so she does the whole range. We're looking to join the likes of Kerry and Payne in due course, no doubt, and she's having a very, very solid swim here. Still leading at the 150 stage 135.10 Georgia Coates is in second and third is Chloe Finch of the city of Birmingham yes yeah, she's looking very very com uh, confident and comfortable in lane number seven obviously these girls qualified yesterday morning for the 800 meters freestyle so they've had a day and a half to to recover so they would have had a massage probably a swim down and probably came in this morning for an easy dip some of these girls probably were racing is what you tend to find with the junior swimmers that they get lots of different times that they can qualify here and they swim as many events as they can which is great for their development and then they can focus a little bit later on when they get older but it does look like now it is georgia coates that turned first in 208 37 so just edging out georgia darwin in lane number seven watch chloe finch though make her move through in lane number five very good progression here for the swimmer in lane number five city of birmingham chloe finch is right up alongside the other two there's nothing to choose between one georgia coates two georgia darwin and chloe finch in third at the moment there is 0.32 between first and third yeah, it's great to see a, a tight race, especially on the 800 metres, because sometimes people can walk away with it. Yeah, it just becomes a procession after that. But it's great that you can actually, these girls are in a race and they can push each other along. Talking of Rebecca's, I saw Rebecca Cook on the marathon. She was standing on the side of the road. She gave us a little cheer. It was very nice of her. She recognised you after all these years? Because you've grown a bit since then. Yeah, I'm still recognising it. It was nice to see her, even though I was walking at the time. So Georgia Coates is leading the way, but as you can see, there's not much to choose between one, two, three, and also trying to come back into the mix is Isabel Griffiths in lane number six. She's catching the other three fairly rapidly here. Can they keep their distance from her? She's making her move up, but uh, still nobody making a break. Georgia Coates at the front, but it's not a decisive break yet. She's in lane number four. Georgia Darwin in lane number seven. And third place is going to go to Chloe Finch. So Chloe's just in the second place so one to three are separated by three quarters of a second yeah Chloe Finch is now just starting to make a move just getting up onto the shoulder of the other swimmers and the two city of Birmingham swimmers in lane five and six so they will not want to be beaten by each other teammates do not like to be beaten by each other but at the minute it is Georgia Coates has probably responded to that charge and it's just starting to now wind up and edge out in front as we come to the 400 meter mark halfway Georgia Coates turns first in 422.01 Chloe Finch is second 
just over a half a second, about 0.7 of a second behind. And less than a second between one and three, and I'm still watching the ever-improving and ever-closing Isabel Griffiths. She's still there, hasn't quite made the big breakthrough to the top three yet, and also on the other side, Holly Hibbert in lane number three, who set her personal best this morning. Probably maybe at this stage a little bit too much to do to get in the mix for one and two. But those uh, little stragglers behind the top three, we're not reading stragglers much longer because they're getting closer with every stroke. There's a big margin to close. Georgia Coates is leading 4.55.13 at that split. She's got a lead of just over a second now, so a bit improving on in terms of the gap over Chloe Finch. And third is Georgia Darwin with Holly Hibbert in fourth and Isabel Griffiths in fifth. We're really impressed with Georgia Coates since we really noticed her at the British Gas International Meet in Leeds last year, this time last year, and she just seems to have been developing and developing since then and seen, so they noticed her name a lot more around the scene in Britain and here she is having a commanding swim she's starting to really edge out from the rest of the field increasing her lead so 300 meters well, 275 meters to go now and she looks very very comfortable and it's down to the rest of the field now to try and pull that deficit back but it looks like she is very very smooth and each stroke is getting further away from the rest of the field. Georgia Davis, uh, sorry, Georgia Coates uh, has got a lead now of what? Just about 2.3 seconds over second place Chloe Finch. Third place to Georgia Darwin. Fourth is Holly Hibbert. Now, is there any way anybody could reel Georgia Coates in? It looks to me like the uh, lead swimmer has pretty much got all she needs in the tank to repel all comers. But having said that, look all of a sudden at Chloe Finch in lane number five. She's going strong and suddenly, once again, Georgia Darwin's coming back but the gap is not really getting any smaller between first, second and third. The second and third is very tight indeed. It does actually look like Georgia Coates has increased her stroke rate as well. She's now got 200 metres, so these girls, it'll feel like a sprint to these girls now, the last four laps, and they'll be certainly edging their way towards the end, and it'll be music to the ears when they hear the bell. With 100 metres to go, two lengths. But no, you're right, it doesn't look like anybody is actually closing the gap, even though the rest of the girls are trying their hardest to claw that deficit back. But at the minute, it's three lengths to go. It is Georgia Coates that's going to turn first in 7, 10, 21. And 2.6 seconds behind is Chloe Finch from the City of Birmingham in 2.12.83. And third place it is Georgia Darwin from the City of Newcastle. 7, 13, 18. So there's about three seconds separating first to third. 115 remaining now for Georgia Coates of Leeds. Set a new personal best this morning. Looking to get around in about the 8.47s, 8.46s if she can. That's the sound she wanted to hear. The bell signifying there is only 100 metres left for her. Only 100 left for Chloe Finch. And only one left for Holly Hibbert and for Georgia Darwin in lane number seven. Just one at the back of the pack is Jennifer King, who's just about to turn now. All the others are into their final 100. And very much on her way, Georgia Coates in lane number four. Yeah, but Holly Hibbert in lane number three is trying her best to, to really close that gap. She's not going to do it. She's got 55 metres to try and close the ball. There's going to be a massive battle for second and third between Holly Hibbert and Chloe Finch, who has been second for most of the race. Can these girls catch Georgia Coates? This is going to come down to a big finish. I don't think they're going to... Well, I don't know. They're, they're flying down this last 50. Can Georgia Coates hold on to this lead? I think she's going to. But who's going to get second and third? Holly Hibbert's going to get second, it looks like. And I think Georgia Coates is just about going to hang on. But Holly Hibbert's coming right alongside her last few metres. This is agony for Georgia Coates. She is just going to get there first and does in 8.50.42. The gap in the end was only eight tenths of a second between Georgia and Holly Hibbert in second place. That hurt. That hurt her terribly down the last 50. Third place to Chloe Finch and fourth, Georgia Darwin. 8.50.42 for Georgia. Second, Holly Hibbert. Wow, she was so happy that wall was there because she couldn't have done much more. No, another 25 metres and Holly Hibbert would have certainly have gone past her, but Holly Hibbert had an entry time of 
Oh, season best. So she, yeah, season best by over seven seconds. Just missing her PB. But what a fantastic swim from these girls. Holly Hibbert probably had a little bit too much left down that last 500 meters. Probably should have made her move a little bit earlier on. But still a fantastic race and a, and a great way to start the female races off this evening. Surely we'll be joining our colleagues from Sky Sports to bring you all the action from the seniors. Men's 200 meters backstroke final, followed by the 800 freestyle for women. Jazz Carlin going in that. Then Sam Hind, oh sorry, Ollie Hind, all on his own in the 200 meters individual medley final. One man against the clock. 50 freestyle semifinals, and then the 50 backstroke for women. First final of the evening for the seniors is the 200 meters backstroke. And there are, well, some emerging names. The big names have pretty much departed the scene. No more James Goddard. He retired last year. Chris Walker Heppen has decided that it's the 50 and the 100 for him in the future. So who is going to fill the void? Charlie Balderson went sub two minutes for the very first time. So I want to introduce him as they come on to full deck. Liam Knight of Loughborough in late. Callum Jarvis swimming a lot in different events here, representing Wales. Personal best in the 159 range for him. Quite way outside that this morning. Plymouth Leander, represented by Joe Hume in lane number seven. Jonathan Carlisle is in two. So he's a City of Sunderland swimmer. He's also with the Bath team. Blue Green Manco Cockermouth going in lane number six, also one of the English swimmers out there. From Wales, now with Sylvia Cardiff, has been for a few years with Dame Haller, is Xavier Mohammed in three. Plymouth in lane five, it's Joe Patching. And before today, this man had never been. Sub two minutes. He has now. In the 158 range, and the fastest qualifier, University of Sterling, just up the road, but an English swimmer, that is Charlie Bolton. Very impressive this morning, Ross. Yeah, excellent swim, like you said. Never been under two minutes before this morning, and then went 158.88, so huge lifetime best. He is the fastest swimmer in this final, certainly the fastest qualifier in this final, and the pressure is now on. See if he can deliver it again. See how well he recovered from this morning's efforts and see how he can back that up tonight in the final. So all eyes on Charlie Bolson in lane number four. I'm sure quite a few people are screaming at the television sets if they are Scottish or just fans of backstroke saying, what about Craig McNally? Yes, he did very well at the Worlds in 2013. New Scottish record holder was at the Scottish Nationals last week, has opted out of this event at the British this week. So we know that Craig is definitely on form. Was last year with a 155.6. And he will be part of the Scottish Commonwealth Games team later on this year. Working to see what the English can do. It's a very, very tight nomination time. I wonder whether anybody's capable of getting close to 156.79. It's going to be extremely tough, but a fantastic start from Joe Patrick in lane number five. Also a great start from Callum Jarvis and Liam Knight in one and two respectively. So it is Liam Knight who is in lane number eight and turns first in a time of 27.73 closely followed by Joe Patchin in lane five and Callum Jarvis in lane number one so it's also like the outside lanes and one person from the middle that is leading this 200 meters backstroke out only four of the eight in this field have actually gone sub two minutes before now waiting for everybody to get into the magic 159s and lower if they possibly can it's lane one Callum Jarvis who leads at the halfway stage. Joe Patching in second. Third is Luke Greenbank and Liam Knight after a very, very fast start has slipped back into fifth place. Been really impressed with Callum Jarvis this week. A fantastic time in the 100 metres freestyle last night and the 200 metres freestyle. We'll be representing Wales at the Commonwealth Games later on this year. But it just seems now that the rest of the field are catching Callum Jarvis up. Charlie Bolson, the fastest swimmer into this final, is struggling with the pace a little bit as we speak. And it's going to be Joe Patching that turns first in lane number Number five, 128.62, just ahead 
just literally ahead by five one hundred a second from Luke Greenbank in lane number six. It would be great if most of the swimmers here could get into the 159s. So I have to go considerably quicker. The consideration for the English Commonwealth Games team. It's going to be a good scrap here between lanes five and six. Is it going to be Joe Batching? Is it going to be Luke Greenback? And also coming back very late on, too late, I think Charlie Balderson might just get this. You know, Charlie Balderson does get wow. it. Incredible <laughs> finish. 159.40. Remember, this is a man who'd never gone sub two minutes until this morning. He has done it twice in a day. And he left it so, so late for a new personal best. Joe Patching in second and third, Luke Greenback. We pretty much wrote Charlie Balderson off, didn't we, with 50 to go? suddenly he became a sprinter. Yeah, I certainly did. At 100 meter mark, he was so far behind the rest of the field. And he just chipped away at the rest of the guys. And even then, if you look at the screen now, he, he's still a good two, three meters behind. And he just, every stroke, chipped away, chipped away, had a fantastic finish. Just got the touch by 14 one hundred of a second. And that's a fantastic way to back up the heats from this morning. I don't think even he believed it. He looked up at the scoreboard, yeah. Some eyebrows raised because, well, there were two possible winners. And uh, neither of them at that stage were Charlie Balls at 159.40. So three go sub, two minutes. Joe Patching, 159.54. Luke Greenbank at 159.87. That's your one, two, three in the 200 backstroke. Charlie, what a final 50. That was an incredible swim. Your first British title. Talk us through that race. Uh, I came into this tonight feeling pretty confident. I uh, had a good swim this morning. It was a big PB for me. So tonight was more about trying to win the gold medal, which I managed to get, luckily. Um, I think I might have paced this a little bit, a bit, little bit wrong tonight, but that's stuff I can work on and improve in the future. Definitely. And we knew that the, the final this evening was going to be wide open in the absence of former champion James Goddard and also Craig McNally. How confident were you coming into this race of your chances of winning? Before, before the meet, I didn't really know where I was. I've moved to Sterling this year and it's been an incredible season training with them and I've learned a lot and I knew something big was in there and I managed to pull it off at the meet so I'm, I'm really happy. Big round of applause for Charlie Boulderson everyone. Excellent stuff. And a rather surprising finish. I think he just admitted what we'd said in commentary there, Ross, that he did actually get his timing completely wrong and realised he was running out of time. Yeah, that, look how far he's behind now, but he's catching with every stroke. And yeah, he, he paced that completely wrong, but like he said, it's a massive PB this morning. He doesn't really know whereabouts he is in terms of his form. And, uh, you know, that, that happens. You know, and he'll go back now and he'll start tra training and working back on his pacing. And, and hopefully when he gets it right, he can be able to go out with the rest of the field and be able to back it, in, back it up just as he did on that last 100. So fantastic swim, fantastic day for Charlie Bolden. Now, Jess Carlin is going to be in the pool as the fastest qualifier for the 800 metres freestyle. She has already been pre-qualified for the Wales team for the Commonwealth Games, and she's not in full race shape. So we'll see what she can do in lane four here. All coming on to Paul Deck, we'll introduce them one by one. First is Lauren Walton of Beckenham. She'll go to lane number eight. Camilla Hattersley knows this pool very well. City of Glasgow swimmer swims here. It's about, uh, oh, about 10 seconds outside of personal best in the heats. Remember, heat straight to final in the uh, 200, 400, 800s here. Eleanor Jones, the swans you just saw. Here's Aisha Thornton of Loughborough. Bright, bubbly girl. I met for the first time yesterday. Very, very entertaining. Jessica Tillman of Derwent side is in lane number six. Representing the University of State, not too far up the road either, Danielle Huskerson. So the personal best in the heats of 8.39.33. From Cynthia Sheffield, they're having a great week, and Eleanor Faulkner hopes that she can continue that as well. She's part of our uh, Olympic squad in 2012. She goes in five. But here is the ever-smiling, ever-beguiling, Hopefully right on form, Jazz Kai. Well, I say we know she's probably not quite right on form because uh, she's already got the time. She's already been pre-qualified for this. So what now, Ross Dambot, does she look to get out of the swim? 
Well, yeah, you're right. She has already qualified for the Commonwealth Games so in about 12 weeks' time. But the thing is with Jazz is she doesn't need much of a rest, so she'll only have about three or four days rest anyway. And because she's been up here in Glasgow for that amount of time, she's probably actually starting to, to have a little bit of a taper. So, you know, I, you, know you can never write Jazz Carlin off ever. So, uh, you know, I probably expect, you know, she'll be, she'll be out there in the front and challenging for the title. There's Ellie Faulkner from the city of Sheffield. I think uh, coach and she were relatively happy, though you didn't couldn't tell that by the look on her face when she finished in the heats, but I think they were quite happy with a solid swim in the heats of the 800. Jazz Carlin is the Wales record holder at 8.18, 58 set in Sheffield last year. And a little bit of disappointment from a British point of view, so from Wales' point of view, that she couldn't quite follow it up in the 4-8 of the World Championship last year. She just narrowly missed out on a medal in the 400. Yeah, she had a busy programme last year in Barcelona at the World Championships, narrowly missing a medal on the 400, and then had to try and back that up in her other events. But she'll be looking to rectify that at the Commonwealth Games. Four years ago, Jazz won a silver medal in the 200 meters freestyle and a bronze in the 400 meters freestyle. So it's a competition that she has fond memories of and hopefully she can go to the Commonwealth Games in 12 weeks time and certainly repeat that, if not go better. Well, she will be flanked all the way, I'm sure, by Ellie Faulkner in lane number five. Early sprinting start, if you like, from Aisha Thornton of Loughborough in lane number two. Lot of uh, pink outfits here. If you're a fan of pink, you've got plenty to entertain you. Jazz Carlin leads at the 100 turn, 1-0-0-29. And second place, Ellie Faulkner, 1-0-0-89. Third place is lane number two, Aisha Thornton. Jazz Carlin with about ooh, nearly a body legs advantage, but they're almost like spearhead formation here. If you look at four, five, six, seven, eight, they're pretty much in a line where they're about to one body length each behind each other. Yeah, Aisha Thornton of Loughborough University qualified for Team Scotland for the Commonwealth Games last week. So she's on good form, but it's no doubt who the leader is. After three lengths, it's Jazz Carlin, Swansea University, turning a time of 131.49. Just over a second ahead of Eleanor Fortner of City of Sheffield. And it is Jessica Thielman of Derwentside, who actually trains in America. So she doesn't actually train in Derwentside. That's probably why that tan, she has that tan. It's not from swimming outdoors up in Newcastle. Yeah. It's for being in, in Florida. Yeah, I imagine that uh, the weather is a slightly kinder, but she also would have been swimming yards. So again, it's a conversion thing. Any of our American-based swimmers have to do that conversion from yards to meters, and with turns, that can be a little bit problematic, can't it? It can be. It also can be a massive advantage because you've got so many more turns swimming yards, and also in America they compete so so more than we do here in Britain. So every weekend they'll be travelling somewhere to compete, and it, you know, when you're in America, you're swimming against world-class opposition. Every every single weekend. It's something we don't have here in Britain. So when it comes to a head-to-head -head race, I certainly expect the, the Americans to, to, to do very, very well. And any of our British athletes that are training out there, they'll also have gained that experience. But it is Jazz Carlin that is turning the screw. I know we've spoke about it a lot, that she's not necessarily fully tapered, fully rested for this competition. But it's certainly not showing here. And she's starting to extend her lead now. She's coming up to be about five metres up on the rest of the field. And it's going to be Eleanor Fortner that turns second. So Jazz Carlin turns in 305.67. So averaging around about just under 62 per 100. So if she can keep this going, then she'll be looking at trying to, to do her personal best of 818.58. I don't think she'll probably be uh, in that kind of form, but let's see how close she can get to that. Uh, what a fantastic opportunity it is here in Glasgow. Season's best for her of 8.23.91. So at the moment, she's well on course for that. And the gap was 3.22 last time. It's increased by over a half a second from Eleanor Faulkner in second place. Jessica oh, Thielman is in third. This is always very hard in an 800 free when you're seeing the feet of your main opposition disappearing to the distance. Well, if Jazz is not in total race shape, she's doing a very good impression of somebody who is, put it that way, because every time she comes past us, the 
the lead seems to be bigger between her and Ellie Faulkner in second place, who's uh, holding on to second from Jessica Thielman, but the lead now between first place, Jazz Carling, 408-84, and Eleanor Faulkner is 4.63, so it's not extending that much. It's a very solid swim from Jazz. Ellie has a lot of work to do to get into a slipstream. Yeah, so half of the race is now complete, and I say if, if Jazz is not in fully race condition, then it looks fantastic for 12 weeks' time at the Commonwealth Games. Well, like I said, Jazz doesn't need too much rest, and she would have competed yesterday morning to qualify for this final. So sort of 36 hours rest, she would have had a swim, should have had a massage to prepare herself for this final tonight. And everything what she has done in that time seems to be paying off. Can't see anybody catching this lead in a million years. And she comes down to 500 meter mark. At this turn, she'll just have six lengths of this toll cross pool to go. English stroke British record held, of course, by Rebecca Adlington set in Beijing when she won the second of her gold medals, 8-14-10. We heard from her earlier on on Sky Sports. Scottish record, Caitlin McClatchy, not doing this event anymore, 8-33-40. But Jazz Carlin holds the Wales record, 8-18-58, set in Sheffield last year before she went to those World Championships in Barcelona. She is a long way away from the rest. Ellie Faulkner, I think, has just about broken the back of... Of Jessica Thielman, Danielle Huskisson in fourth place, and fifth is Aisha Thornton of Loughborough. They can wave Jazz Carlin goodbye because she's long since gone. Yeah, she has absolutely flying at the minute. Doesn't look like unless something really drastic happens that she's going to get close to her PB of 8.18. But would expect it to be around about 8.20, which is a very solid swim, and it put her right up there in the world rankings this year for this event. But no doubt who the winner is going to be. And there's still going to be four lengths of this pool. Well, you can almost measure the gap. It's not quite 15 metres, it's about 10, 11 metres between Jazz Carlin and Ellie Faulkner in second place. She'll be, I think, quite happy with the swim, providing Jessica Thielman doesn't overtake her. And she's kept that fairly respectful distance between them so far, between second and third. Jazz Carlin is a race of her own. She's only got the clock to race because she hasn't seen another person going in the same direction as her for quite some time. She sees them coming back, and when she comes back next time, She's right on the verge of getting to the latter stages. The bell is poised. She has three more legs to go. Next time it will be the bell. And let's have a look how big that gap is between first and second. It's enormous. It's huge. It's almost 10 seconds. 9.36. A couple of seconds between Eddie Faulkner and Jess Thielman. Have a guess now how big the gap is going to be at the end. And also at this stage, Ross, have a guess at what kind of time Jazz Carlin might do at the end. Yeah, so far it's like clockwork. She's just hitting the 63s per 100. And this one will be her final 100 before she puts her head down and sprints to the wall. So the bell indicates there's two lengths to go. And she has actually just dropped in a 62.5, or 62.9, sorry. And expect that to be a bit quicker. So looking to go under 8.20, which will be a fantastic swim here at Tollcross. One of the best times in the year, if she can do it. Jazz Carlin has already pre-qualified just to underline for the Commonwealth Games for Wales, so this is a swim she doesn't in effect need to do, but from her own peace of mind and her own progression through 2014, she is doing it. Now the lead, as you saw, was in double digits, and she is just swimming so far away. I'm trying to look at the measurement on this. It's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 metres between first place and second place. Ellie Faulkner has turned. Still involved in a scrap with Jessica Tillman, but I think she's going to get second place. There's been no doubt for a very, very long time as to who is going to win. The 800 meter freestyle for women is always going to be and has been and is Jazz Carlin. 8 18, 36. It's a new Welsh record for Jazz Carlin. She's got inside her previous best from Sheffield 2013. That came out of the blue. We weren't expecting it, or probably you weren't expecting it, was she? Well, you never know. The look of the face might tell you. But that is a new Wales record for Jazz Carlin. 
8, 18, 36. Ellie Faulkner in second, 8, 32 from her. And uh, that's the season's best by quite some way. And third place, Jessica Tillman, you little minx, Jazz Carling. We didn't see that coming, but she has just achieved pretty much what she achieved about a year ago in Leeds, a super swim. Yeah, I said uh, halfway through the commentary, it doesn't like she's going to get around the 8.18 mark, and she's proved us all wrong. Her last 100 was 60.7, I think if I'm all so right, 60.7 on the last 100, and she was clocking before that, 63, 62. So fantastic finish to the 800, and if she's got that in her locker, then the rest of the Commonwealth, the rest of the world, look out, because if she can just drop that in at any point, that's a fantastic swim and a new Welsh record. She had to write 2012 off because she was so ill and missed the Olympic Games. She's making up for lost time here. 8, 18, 36. She won that by about 14 seconds, 14 and a half seconds. Let's see what Jazz Carlin has to say about the cracking time and a new Wales record. Jazz, a magnificent swim from you there. You came into this meet completely unrested. Just talk us through that race. Um, well, in warm-up beforehand, I was actually feeling really rubbish, and I was panicking a bit and getting a bit nervous, but as soon as I dove into the pool, obviously, you're in a race environment, get a bit excited, and I'm just buzzing to come away with that time. And you must be thrilled to defend your title, considering you're unrested for this meet. Yeah, definitely. I think it's always great when you come here and you're racing the best of British. Um, it's a really strong field, and uh, I'm just really glad to have backed up the time that I did last year and hoping to go a lot faster at Commonwealths. <laughs> And you were ranked world number three in 2013. After that swim today, you are now ranked world number one. Surely there's got to be a good chance. There's got to be a good chance of a Commonwealth gold this summer. Um, well, in Delhi 2010, I came away with a silver and a bronze, um, but I didn't swim the 800 there. Um, so coming into this meet, it was really about enjoying the Commonwealth pool, getting to know the pool and everything. So. Yeah, I'm obviously aiming to be atop of that podium and I'm going to do everything I can to hope that I can be in the best shape there. And you were pre-selected coming into this meet today. Do you think that took the pressure off a bit and did that help you onto that swim? Um, yeah, it's really nice because it's the first meet that I've come into and not been um, se selected beforehand. So, yeah, it's just really nice to come into the meet, enjoy it, soak up all the atmosphere um, and obviously race in a really great pool. Well, we certainly enjoyed watching you. Thanks very much, Jazz. Thank you.
And the question straight away for Ross Davenport is how difficult is it and how often have you had to swim against the clock with no other opposition? Well, for me personally, I've, I've never ever swam in this situation before where you've just been on your own in a British Championship. But this will be a, a difficult situation, but Holly Hine knows he's, he's racing the clock. He has his PB of 2.24. 0.63 this morning he went to 27.13 so he's a little bit off his pb but he was under the nomination time for the commonwealth games so fantastic swim this morning and let's see what he can do tonight talking to wally earlier on if there's it's a really unreal situation because you have a marker normally you have sean fraser or you have somebody else alongside you who you can uh, use as the benchmark for how well you're doing He'll get plenty of support and plenty of applause from the crowd, but he has to swim his own race. 2.22.76 is the British record. Uh, he's having his evaluation about now as well, because uh, all the Paralympic swimmers have to be checked over to make sure the classification has not changed. So uh, that's quite a stressful time for a swimmer as well. He has the qualification event for the Commonwealth Games coming up in this fall next week and splits in 30.89. It's decent. Yeah, very, very good start for Ollie. We saw him this morning go flat out to around about 150 metres and then really cruise down the last 50 metres. So tonight he won't be cruising any stage and he'll be working uh, hard on all of the four strokes. Butterfly first, backstroke, he turned on to his front to the breaststroke and then finishing off with the freestyle leg. I said it was a, di a difficult situation to be in, to race yourself, but he'll be loving this that the whole crowd are watching him, applauding him, and hopefully he can reward them with a fantastic result. And of course, in the past, what he's had to do is race his brother Sam. He has now retired, so younger brother Ollie is blazing the trail and waving the flag for the Hind family. And this is good. 106.29 at the break. He's got the whole crowd behind him. He'll be infused by that. So always a smiley, happy, bubbly character is Ollie Hind at the best of times. Mansfield will be fully in behind him. Nova Centurion will be fully in behind him. Needs to try and get in around, although he doesn't need the British record today. He might want to save that for next week. But 227.76 is the British record, about uh, four and a half seconds uh, quicker than he went this morning. The split time. 152.09. Not going to go today, I don't think, but you never know with Ollie, he'll get in and around that time. Yeah, was, like I said, we saw him this morning go to this mark and then back off, but now he is sprinting down this final 50 metres. Looks like he's going to have to have a, a cracking last 50 if he's going to go under that British record, but he'll be working incredibly hard to try and do that. He has the British record is 2.22. Just like he's going to be slightly out of that. The 222 is now gone. And he'll be driving all the way to the wall. And 226.49. So a season's best for Ollie. Fantastic swim to do it on your own. And a deserved round of applause from this Glasgow crowd. Well, the qualification time he achieved this morning, but he can't actually do that until he swims here next week. So we know he's in that kind of form. He did go a little bit quicker than he did in the morning swim. All by himself, Ollie Hind with a 2.26. So good for him, and uh, he'll be back in Glasgow next week for the Paralympic trials for the Commonwealth Games.
We love it, but we also hate it as a commentary team because you just see wash. You don't really see any figures. You see eight men submerged by water until they get virtually down to where we are. Uh, I'm placed about uh, five meters from the end. Ross is right on the finish. So hopefully by the time they get to us, we might have an idea what's going on. But the first 25, absolutely not a clue. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we're five meters apart. We don't like to sit next to each other. So uh, we are five meters apart, but it's going to be uh, the big guns in the middle, Adam Brown in lane number four from Hatfield. Really interested about Miles Munro. He's, he's competed at the Island Games for the 1500, and now he's here doing the 50 meters freestyle and ranked one of the fastest swimmers in this race. So he's got, uh, you know, going from 50 all the way up to the 1500, which is fantastic. Also interesting, Ross, Owen Morgan. Only ever does one event. He does the 50 freestyle. We don't see him one year to the next. And the 30 year old as he will be, and already is actually this year, reappears. He is the Wales record holder in lane number six. Just does one big race a year. He actually might have to do more this year. Might be on the Wales team for the Commonwealth Games. So centre legs we're looking at, Adam Brown, who won the 100 last night, goes in lane number four. Miles Munro, who Ross talked about in five. Owen Morgan, the Wales record holder in six. Craig Givens going in lane number seven. You can see what I mean now. It's all splash, it's all dash. And Adam Brown already emerging from that splash and dash. Looks like he might have this race won already. Yeah, that's right. He's just switched off the button now. He drove to about 45 metres and then just cruised down. And he, he did take that win in 22 points. 6-2, but he wasn't fully in then. He did, like I say, he worked to about 90, 90%, and then just cruised down the last 10%, and touched the wall first. 22.62, Miles Monroe, the 1500 swimmer, now the 50 swimmer in second, in 22.81, and Jack Thorpe from Edinburgh University in third, 22.98. Here's the finish, you can see his head's down, drive into the wall, that's it, 22 seconds of work, jump out, have a rest. Season's best for Adam Brown, closing in on 21.8, which is his British record. And there's 22.62 for Brownie, Mars Monroe 22.81, Jack Thorpe 22.98, and Andrew Weatherett will have to wait and see whether he'll be back for the final tomorrow. You know, it's a, it's a wonder, and you've done 50 very occasionally, how people don't actually break their hand when they go into the war. They're going with so much force. When they come into the war, it's am amazing. There's not more kind of broken fingers or hands when they go into the war like that. Yeah, sometimes you do it in training, like you do jar your fingers because you, you touch with your, your fingertips. There's no point finishing with your palms because that's not the quickest way of doing it. So you finish with your fingertips and then let your palms go onto the wall. And actually in 2008, Becky Adlington won the 400 meters freestyle because she finished with the fingertips and the American girl actually finished with the palms. So, you know, that's how that's how much of a difference it can make. It can be the difference from winning the gold medal or, or certainly coming second, third or fourth. Here's the one to eight for the second semi-final of the 50 freestyle. And we have the Scottish record holder going in this one in lane number six. Richard Schaefer's at the University of Edinburgh. Scottish record of 22.47. But we also have Ben Proud from Plymouth in lane four. His PB of 22.01. The quickest man in the field. Quickest man in Britain at the minute. Richard Schaefer set in originally in Bristol in the new 50-meter facility down there. James Disney May is a training partner of Adam Brown at Auburn in America. Ben Proud is the new kid on the block from Plymouth Leander. About a year ago, we knew very little about him, knowing an awful lot about him, and he's going to try and catch everybody else, or they're going to have to try and catch him, because Ben Proud is going remarkably quickly. Richard Schaefer's in lane six, two. James Disney May can't keep up with this pace. Look at Ben Proud go! 22.35! That is a very quick time, not quite his first or best, but considerably quicker than he went this morning by about a third of a second, and nobody got close to him. No, absolutely smashed the rest of the field on a 50 metres. He has won that by just under half a second, and for a 50 event, that is a huge margin. You can see the distance by the time he touched the wall was around about a metre. You see now he's starting to come in the final 15 metres. The rest of the field are nowhere to be seen, and that's half a second right there. It's around about a metre, at least a stroke, 
And a fantastic swim from Ben Proud. He'll want to go quicker tomorrow night in that final. But he's up against the big lad, ben Adam Brown, who is the British record holder. So it'll be a good head-to-head -head tomorrow night in that final. And the big surprise is James Disney May does not make the final. He was ninth overall. So the uh, fifth-place swimmer there does not return tomorrow. Ben Proud, Levi Lucas, Richard Schaefers, and Kane Haggart all do. Whilst while our uh, colleagues at Sky Sports are away on a commercial break, Ross and I can talk about, well, the highlight of the night by a long, long way. Some great swims, but one stands out massively amongst the others. Jazz Carlin, a Wales record. I will not hold you and take you to task. The fact you didn't think it would be, because I didn't think it would be either. I didn't see her having the spurt and the sprint that she had right at the end of that race to beat the record she set last year. Yeah, that's right. You, you always expect swimmers to, to put in a, a fast 100 towards the end, but 60 points, I think it was about 6.8 in the end. Fantastic last 100. And, yep, yeah, you know, I thought she'd go around about 8.20 this, this evening. But to go the personal best, which is obviously is a, a Welsh record, a fantastic return for her work. It would have been lovely to see her and Rebecca Adnanton when they were both on form to go head to head. It's a shame that they've kind of lived in, in different areas. But no doubt that Becky has inspired Jazz to go on and, and, and uh, certainly motivated to go on and do what she is doing here tonight. So it would have been lovely to see that head-to-head, -head, but not to be. But hopefully Jazz now can carry on that mantle of moving forward as the number one British 800-metre swimmer. And hopefully we can see her representing Great Britain on the international stage, winning medals for her country. Real shame for me, though, Ross, and you were part of the uh, Great Britain team in 2012 at the London Olympics, as we didn't see her there because she should have been there. She was our second best 800 freestyler. Uh, Ellie Paul had got that position, and she would have been, I'm sure, if Jazz was on total form and was fit, that she would have been the one going to the Olympics. Yeah, she, Jazz had so many difficulties in that year through illness and injury, and it just, you know. What a year to have it, 2012, a home Olympic Games, and you know, it all, if anything could go wrong, it did go wrong for Jazz, but you know, the way she's, she's battled back, she obviously lost the funding because she wasn't competing, and she came back last year and just absolutely smashed everything. And it's a credit to her, it's a credit to her coach, and it's a credit to her family that obviously was sort of rallied round her to be able to, for her to be able to produce those times. And she's now reaping the rewards, and you know she's in a whole different place than she was, you know, 18 months ago. And uh, it's a shame for her, but that time is gone, and now she can move on and look forward. She does have, you know, we, she knows she's Welsh, but the Commonwealth Games are in Glasgow. That's the next best opportunity for for her to to represent Wales in a home Commonwealth Games, and then obviously we're moving on to the World Championships and Rio Olympics. So fingers crossed for Jazz, she can stay healthy and she can stay injury free because she. Is a, she's a great talent and a lovely girl. How excited do you think we should be about Ben Proud? We've not had too many sprinters of quality over the years. Do you think he's going to take it to another level? I think he already has done. Um, it's certainly the depth in the 50 metre event. Yes, we have Adam Brown. He is the, the British record holder still on the 50 freestyle. But Ben now is starting to challenge him. And hopefully those two boys can really push each other on. And when you get two people doing it, you'll get three, you'll get four, you'll get five. And everything will start moving in the right direction. Like I said, we, we haven't really had the, the sprinters in Britain for, for many years. Liam Tancock is a different story on the 50 metre backstroke. He, is the world, he was the world champion and the world record holder. But, um, you know, it's just great that they have that, that rivalry and they can push each other forward. Thanks, Ross. Back with our colleagues in Sky Sports 2 with a 50 backstroke next. The silver medal representing City of Sheffield.
special guest here. Tell me. I have indeed Alan with me here at the Liam Tancock, 50 metre battery for world record holder. Now, Liam, we, we know you've had a tough 2013 season with injury. How difficult has it been to come back from that today? Uh, for me, it's more finding out what the injury was in the first place. And then when, once you find out what it is, you can, you know, you, you can improve it basically. So uh, well, that's what it's been about this this last year, and, um, and get back to where I know I can go. And we know that you went to a rehab clinic. Is that right? Can you just elaborate on that a little bit more? Yes, yeah, so the British Medical Association um, has got a rehab, or an intensive rehab unit, based uh, just outside of London in Bishop Abbey, um, and it's sort of a last ditch attempt for me to, to find out what the problem. Um, went to see loads of specialists, got um, scans, x-rays, MRI scans, moving x-rays, uh, saw surgeons, saw pretty much everyone that I possibly could, uh, couldn't find out what the problem was, checked into the rehab unit down in Bishop uh, with the BOA and the EIS and um, found out what the problem was, which was great, that was pretty December last year, uh, and then it's, you know, once I found out the problem I could try and fix it, work with the team up in, in Loughborough, the, um, at the training centre there, and uh, to move things on. So, yeah, it's been pretty good since then. Obviously, frustrated beforehand, but um, uh, I'm back on the road to, to recovery now, I guess. And you were back in the water on the 4th of January, so you've had a pretty short training season, really. How's that been going? Yeah, so for me, I guess, well, all strippers know it's um, a continuous thing when you're, when you're training. You usually train from sort of end of August, uh, September time, all the way through to the trials, which are obviously now, and then uh, the next season starts from obviously next week until until the major competition. So I missed out on you know a big big portion of uh, this training cycle because of injury. Obviously I wanted to get back, obviously this is the back end of last year as well, the World Championships. I wanted to get back in uh, end of August, September and push on through. Unfortunately that wasn't the case and um, you know found out in, in December what it was um, and slowly got back into it in January because I couldn't do everything I could normally do it's about uh, doing the things I could do and doing those things well, uh, improving, working with the team based in Upper and um, getting me to back where I am today. So yeah, it's been a short cycle. Uh, it has been tough, it's been frustrating, but I guess that's the life of an athlete. And that's what you've got to Next race will be the first semi-final of the women's 50 metres backstroke. You may have heard of Andrew Willis. His sister, Ross, will be doing her bit in this, and there she is in lane number one. Yeah, she's been in lane number one. The Loughborough University student, Catherine Willis, is the sister of Andrew Willis. And it will be the semi-final number one of the women's 50 metres backstroke. You see Georgia Davis in lane number four. She's moved from Swansea to Loughborough University. And she's coached by James Gibson, the former 50 metre world champion from 2003. So she's joined the sprint program. Expect her to be out there in front on this event in the opening semi-final. And see the girls walk out onto the poolside. Georgia is the Wales record holder. 27.96 set in Sheffield in June 2011. Scottish record held by Kathleen Dawson. I'll correct that. 27.80 is the Wales record. Kathleen Davis, Kathleen Dawson of Scotland has uh, their record 28.69. And the British record, been on the books now for five years. And unlikely to go here, Gemma Spoff, what a great swimmer she was, had a real purple patch in Rome. Both the 50, 100, and the 200. She was uh, brilliant at that. Very hard mark to beat. So the main movers and shakers, if you like, should be in lanes three, four, and five. Rachel Lefley of City of Manchester in three. Georgia Davis, four. Jaeger Turner improved this morning in the semi-final, in, in the heat going to the semi-final. And uh, then there's Karen Reed in six for South Ayrshire. So just like we saw Ben Proud in the previous 50 metres, this is all about Georgia Davis using all of that 15 metres under the water off the start and a convincing win from Georgia Davis, 28.25. So not a personal best, but easily into tomorrow night's final. And Turner in second place from the city of Salford, 28.83. And Rachel Lethley from the city of Manchester Aquatics in third, 29.15. So a commanding swim from Georgia Davis. That won't take too much out of her. She'll get down and have a swim down and get ready for tomorrow night's final.
Yeah, commanding swim by the world's record holder and a very good swim by Jaeger Turner of City of Salford. A new personal best. She's gone sub-29 for the very first time. 28.83. Rachel Leffley in third place. Katie Latham fourth. They'll all be hopeful of a return in the final tomorrow night. Semi-final number two on the way, but there's a result of semi-final number one. Georgia Davis, Jaeger Turner, Rachel Leffley and Katie Latham probably, hopefully, on their way to the top eight tomorrow. Yeah, you really want to be coming in the top three to make sure you're in that final for tomorrow night. Uh, even if you come second or first, if the eight girls in the second semi-final go quicker than you, you won't be there, but certainly don't expect eight people to go quicker than Georgia Davis. Uh, if not, she'll be the fastest in tomorrow night's final, but we do have Lauren Quigley in lane four, Jessica Fuller Love in lane number three, and a certain Francesca Housel in lane number five. She's normally a freestyle swimmer, 50 and 100 freestyler. Now she's trying her hand at 50 meters backstroke. I spoke to her the other day and she wants to qualify for the Commonwealth Games on five individual events as well as the relays. So she'll have a busy program if she does that in 12 weeks time. But this is one of the events where she needs to post a quick time. So the selectors look, selectors look at her and then put her into the 50 meters backstroke because you cannot be selected for a 50 event from this competition. You already will have to be on the team before you get selected for the 50 events, unless it's 50 freestyle, which of course is an Olympic event. I imagine the backstrokers look around and go, Fran, Fran, you're a freestyler, you're a fly swimmer. What are you doing in our domain? They're coming into the backstroke, but of course, anything she sets her mind to, she can do, and very often does do. She is in lane number five. We're looking at uh, Lauren Quigley of Stockport Metro. Second, uh, well, actually the fastest qualifier for the semi-finals. And uh, very close to beating that one minute barrier in the hundred. Didn't quite manage it. But look quickly for quickly in lane number four, because she's going to go probably as speedily as anybody over the first 25, but she knows she's up against a real racehorse in Fran Housel in lane number five. It does look like Fran and Lauren Quigley, oh, one and two. Fran looked like she was quicker actually through 25, but it's Lauren Quigley now that's starting to pull away. A little bit more endurance base on this hundred, on this backstroke, doing the 100 and the 200 metres. But it's going to be Lauren Quigley that wins his second semi-final in a time of 28.05. Francesca Housel second in in 28.34, so she'll be third fastest into tomorrow night's final. Jessica Fullerlove was third in 28.96. So a good swim from Fran Housel, not her main event as we've just spoke about, but fantastic. We see the start now. Fran used every single inch, centimetre, of that 15 metres allowed underwater. You see a pop-up just now, there are the red marks. You have to be up before the red marks or you'll get disqualified. And you, she could not lay, left that any closer. And she had a fantastic start. But now it is Lauren Quigley that comes in to finish this 50 metres backstroke. And the should have looked at the flags to time her stroke to perfection and she does that and she wins semi-final number two and she's the fastest qualifier tomorrow night Laura quickly very very close to her first or best just three one hundredths outside of it Fran Housel in second Jessica Fuller Love in third Katie Latham takes the last place for the final tomorrow night Rachel Leffley in seventh There's the call room, all getting ready, getting nervous, perhaps getting agitated as they get ready for the 100 breaststroke final. Now we have seen a British record from Sophie Taylor in the last year, set in Dubai at the uh, junior tournament there, 107.36. We saw what she did earlier in the week, Ross, in the 200. What can we expect from Sophie in the 100? Is there another British record in the offing here? Oh, I don't see why not. She had a fantastic 200 a couple of nights ago. And she also had a great 50, so she's on, you know, she's absolutely flying at the minute. And this is a time to show and wrap up the week nicely with 100 metres. And she will be going in lane number four. Molly Renshaw will be in lane number three. More of a 200 metre specialist. Trying a hand at the 100 metres. And Corey Scott in lane number five is also an excellent swimmer. So. I expect Sophie Taylor to be out there in front, but let's see what time she can do. Mrs. record is hers at 107.36. 
So let's see how close she can get to that. That was a cracking time, and she is in absolutely fantastic form. That's uh, Rachel Wilson of Doanside coming on to ball deck. She'll go straight to lane two. Georgina Evans, City of Liverpool. She was uh, not that far outside of personal best this morning. Molly Renshaw, as Ross mentioned, better known for the 200. Be, uh, trying to get the best she can. She did set a personal best in the semi-final of 109.22. Corey Scott from Edinburgh University will go straight to line five, but uh, all the attention should be rightly focused on this young lady. 18 years of age, just turned 18. Sophie Taylor, City of Leeds. We have waited a long, long time for a world-class breaststroker. I think it could be argued. Last one was uh, Scottish. She was Kirsty Balfour. She is still the Scottish record holder at 107.67. Sophie Taylor, certainly as 100 is concerned, has gone better than that. Molly Renshaw in three, Sophie Taylor in four, Corey Scott in five. Now, no pressure, Sophie Taylor, but if you can repeat and replicate what you did in the 200, you will be uh, creating a crescendo of noise at the Toll Cross Pool. Quiet, but it won't be quiet for long. Sophie Taylor in lane number four, 107.36, her personal best. That, too, is the English and the British record. She went 108 low in the semi-finals, and she already, at 25, has a lead of about a body length. Yes, yeah, certainly does. I just mentioned no one's really filled this void from Kirsty Belfort and Kate Haywood in the 100 metres breaststroke, and they retired a couple of years ago, Kirsty Belfort many years ago. But this now is the emerging talent of British women on this event, and it is Sophie Taylor turns first in 31.46, and she's just under 0.8 of the head of Curry Scott in lane number five. So she can keep this going. She'll be on for a cracking swim. She can't let this get to her, though. She can't rush her strokes. She needs to keep calm and relaxed. She'll start to feel the rest of the swimmers approaching on her. As long as she keeps focus, she's got 15 metres to go. So hopefully she'll be rewarded with a great swim. Sophie Taylor. Well, up against the clock, really, because nobody's going to get close to her. Corey Scott's trying to, failing. Molly Renshaw is trying and failing. What's the time going to be? 107.08. It is a new British record for Sophie Taylor. She's done it again. She is having one superb week in Glasgow. We thought she'd do it. She didn't just do it. She smashed it. Absolutely smashed it to smithereens. We are getting down to a 106 very shortly. If she keeps going that way, 107.08. That is a very, very fast time indeed. On the world stage as well. They'll be looking at that. Corey Scott in second, Molly Renshaw in third. How does she do it, Ross? Absolutely fantastic. She led that the whole way. She did it all on her own. She didn't panic. I'm saying she can't let this rush get rushed. And she stayed focused all the way to the end. I thought she'd just missed it. But actually, she's gone really and, and smashed it by over 0.2 of a second. That is a fantastic swim. She lowered it last year, the British record. And actually, she didn't finish that great. You know, she couldn't improve on her finish. She was a little bit short, going close to the wall. But what a swim from Sophie Taylor. As you mentioned, she's only 18 years of age, and she's just improving year on year on year. Fantastic swim. Well done. Sophie Taylor. And she won that by over a second and a half. Corey Scott in second, Molly Renshaw in third. We need to hear from Sophie Taylor, who will tell us all about that new British record. Sophie, you seem to be unstoppable this week. A hat-trick of goals in the breaststroke events and a new British record. You must be over the moon. Um, absolutely. Like, I'm so pleased with that. I didn't expect anything like it. And getting a gold in all three events is just amazing. I'm so happy. And that's the first time that that's been done in seven years. Were you expecting to win all three? Um, no, not at all. Like, it's just more than I could ever imagine. I'm just, I can't believe it yet. And you won medals at last year's World Junior Championships. This summer will be your first senior international debut. What targets do you have ahead of the summer? Um, just more PBs, more good swims. Um, just, yeah, keep improving the way I am and hopefully break some more records. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Sophie Taylor. Well done.
And she better get used to those interviews because she's going to have a microphone stuck under her nose more often than not if she performs like that. We are getting down to the 67 run. We're not quite where we need to be worldwide yet, but that is a massive step forward from Sophie Taylor. She needs to drag somebody else with her now. We need some competition because she can't do everything against the clock, but that is absolutely superb. Now, hopefully this will be similarly superb. 200 meters butterfly for women. Georgia Bar and improved on her previous best time. The only one actually to do a personal best in the heat she goes in for, and you'll recognize Hannah Miley from Geary in lane number five, doing one of her favorite events, probably her second favorite event as far as the IM's concerned. Yeah, that's right. We also see in lane seven, Amy Wilmot. These two girls normally known for the 400 meters I am. We're trying their look with the 200 meters butterfly, but the fastest qualifier, Georgia Barton, in lane number four, set the PB to qualify first for this final. Still some way off the England nomination time for the Commonwealth Games. That is 2:08:53, and Georgia Barton's PB is 2:11. So quite some some way off. They're taking out a fantastic swim tonight. Who knows? Just seen a British record. Hopefully that will inspire them to bigger and better things. And they'll come out firing on this 200 metres butterfly. She mentioned we don't have the Wales record holder Gemma Lowe here. She said that in Sheffield, 205.36. And the British record holder has uh, turned Aussie, sadly. Ellen Gandy, who is the British record holder, based in Australia now, has uh, decided to swim for Australia, has qualified for Australia, and will be at the Commonwealth Games for Australia. Yeah, it's just a shame to lose Ellen Gandhi. She's a fantastic swimmer, and a, a lovely person as well. But she lives over there, so all the travelling back was, was too much. And uh, you know, she obviously she's made the right decision now to, to represent Australia. Uh, she's just made the Commonwealth Games team. So that's home for her. So if that's home for her, then obviously she's, she's turned Australian. But it's a shame that we've lost her, but it's uh, Australia's game. Yeah, it certainly is, and a great loss to Great Britain. There's Hannah Miley, always got a smile. Yes, she's known as Smiley Miley. And we were talking earlier on in the day, Ross and myself, I think you can pretty much tick off every single event on the women's program. She has done it, whether it's all the freestyles, all the butterflies, all the backstrokes, all the breaststrokes, she has done it, and probably done a very good time in it as well. Yeah, that's right, she's absolutely machine. Uh, she just loves racing and loves competing. And the more, the merrier for Hannah Miley. But how is she going to fare here in the 200 meters butterfly? She is ranked number two going into this, but actually has the fastest PB. So, could be another British title for Hannah Miley. Who knows? Let's wait and see. Well, she is the Scottish record holder at 208.24. Outset in Sheffield in 2009, back in those shiny suit days, as we say. Not sure how much it actually helped Hannah because her frame is so small, but uh, she goes in lane number five. Georgia Barton, the fastest squad ever, maybe surprisingly, from City of Manchester in lane four. New personal best this morning of 2.11.41. Eleanor Sheridan in three for Loughborough. Rachel Kelly, who had such a great swim earlier in the week, surprising uh, both Fran Housel and Chevron Marie O'Connor in the 100 to win. That goes in the 200 in lane six. Well, these girls seem to be pretty much in a line as they approach the first turn. It does actually look like it is going to be Alice Thomas from Swansea University turning first in 29.03. Just one tenth ahead of Amy Wilmot in lane number seven. So we've got two and seven leading this field out. Alice Thomas, by the way, for Wales is looking at a time of 2.10.40. So her best time is 2.11.05. She wants to get on that Wales team. She's got a bit of work to do. She's doing that work, though, in lane number two. And she's the surprising early leader and will still be leading at 100. So Alice Thomas, give me that mark her again. She's looking for 2.10.40 to make the Wales team for the Commonwealth Games, and 1160 is not shabby. No, it's not. She's right on that target, and also she's dragging out Tilly Gray with her, and still Amy Wilmot. So, the battle is on the outside of the pool in 
one and two and in lane number seven but it looks like now the rest of the field are starting to catch up on Thomas but it looks like Amy Wilmot is still going strong out in lane number seven and this is going to get very very tight down this last 50 expect Hannah Miley to finish strong but it does look like she's left herself too much work to do with 150 to go look at that gap between first and second Amy Wilmot has suddenly just turned on the afterburners 1.46 seconds she is in the lead 2.10.30 is her personal best she's got to get down to 2.8.53 for automatic selection or nomination at least for the English Commonwealth Games team but at the moment she keeps this going she's going to win this by a long long way Rachel Kelly coming back also coming back in four is Georgia Barton Hannah Miley's not going to get there Amy Wilmot is the only person in the frame what kind of time could she do 2.07.97 wow absolutely wow that's amazing absolutely amazing Amy Wilmot she has got the nomination time for the England team we thought that would be out of sight for everybody remember she has not been sub 210 before today forget the 209s forget the 208s let's go to straight to 207.97 that is an incredible swim and she won that by a street or if you like almost three and a half seconds absolutely incredible absolutely. she swam her own race and I think it helped to be an out in lane number seven she wasn't you know didn't really kind of get wound up with the rest of the swimmers that were nearer and she just did her own thing a finish was actually dreadful and she can go a lot quicker if she sorts a finish out but that is a huge lifetime best under the English nomination time for the Commonwealth Games and look how delighted she is she has had a fantastic week this week 400 medley has been good and now the 200 butterfly has been fantastic so Anna, Amy Wilmot please carry this going forward because you're improving every single time you get into the pool a breathtaking swim from Amy Wilmot 207.97 Tilly Gray in second Eleanor Sheridan third she won that by an absolute distance Whew. what do we say Ross what do we say to that we're seeing two fantastic swims tonight uh, Jazz Carlin in 800 meters freestyle and now Amy Wilmot well let's hear from Amy Wilmot, 207.97. What has she got to say about that terrific swim? Amy, a huge swim from you there. You really took the race out hard from the start. Were you surprised by that time? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I knew the time was 2.08, and I thought if I can get as close to that as possible, then maybe I'll kind of get to swim it at the games. And I was just really happy to see that 2.7, and I didn't really think that was in me. After the heats this morning, this final was seemingly wide open. What was your race strategy coming into this event? I knew that a lot of the girls in that would go out hard to the 100, so the aim was to try and stay with them. And for the first time at the meet, I had quite a good dive, so I kind of came up in some clear water and just sort of went on from that and tried to build the race as I went through and just finish as strong as I could. We usually see you in the individual medley events, but obviously a stunning swim today in the butterfly. Might we see a switch of focus? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> Although butterflies in the IM, um, it's not really one of my favorite training strokes, but it's always good to get in and, and race the butterfly. So I'm really, really happy with how things are going. Brilliant, a great swim from Amy. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> We, Ross Davenport, have had three stimulating, sensational swims, all from the girls. Yeah, we certainly have. You know, I just, just mentioned we had two, and uh, completely slipped my mind. There was Sophie Taylor, the British record on the 100 metres breaststroke, and Amy Wilmot now backing up with 200 metres fly, and obviously Jazz Carlin earlier on. So absolutely fantastic for the women.
And I thought it was the men that were starting to come yeah, through. Yeah, me too. I, I, I've been talking about this. Uh, everything is cyclical at the moment. That uh, It was all about between 2008 oh, and 2012. Yeah. The girls are strong, blah de blah de blah And the men are coming yeah. back in uh, 2012, 2016. Well, we thought they were. I'm sure they will be. Michael James is talking on the pool deck at the moment, and we know he's one of the strongest men there is in swimming around the world. But all of a sudden, we've gone bang, bang, bang. Jazz Carlin, Sophie Taylor, and then that amazing swim by Amy Woman. I looked at her personal best. Well, yeah, she might knock a second off it, but look at that time that she has to get for nomination for the Commonwealth Games. That surely is out of reach. No, it's just out of reach. It's nowhere near. She breaks it, smashes it, and uh, it can't be too long before she gets down into uh, the realms of Ellen Gandhi's time. Yeah, still a long way to go to, to get down to the, you know, the, the two minutes point four of Ellen Gandhi, but she's certainly on the right track. And as long as she keeps doing what she's doing, she'll start, start to bridge that gap. But yeah, fantastic swims from, from the girls tonight. But hopefully, you know, there's no reason why it should be girls against boys and, and one, one uh, four-year cycle that's the girls, the next it should be the boys. Hopefully they can just do it together and we have a fantastic squad and then that's probably what they're trying to do. Well, I thought that is what they're trying to do in, in the British swimming is get everybody moving in the right direction and we're seeing, we're seeing that and you know, the next event is the 50 metres breaststroke, which is fantastic. Yeah, the boys will respond surely in the 50 breast. and Petey against Ross Murdoch here on the stream and on Sky Sports 2 coming next. Whose phone's that? Could see that you were going for that world record time. Is that a few this summer? Yeah, definitely. I've, I've swum to your summer a few times now. Um, it's just about fine tuning things, I think, between now and the summer. Um, you know, hopefully I'll be in a position then to, to dip under to your summer. And we've heard that you're quite disappointed this season because you won't be able to race your number one rival, Daniel Gerten. What, what difference does that make when you're, when you're trying to sort of plan your races? Um, well, I mean, I've never really beaten Dan, so I always feel like I'm doing him a bit of a disservice calling him a rival. But, um, but yes, there's still going to be a world, world class crop of athletes in the, in the 200 breast this summer. Um, the Australians just had their trials last week, and um, Christian Spring swam 208. So I can't know that whoever's in the race is going to have to be in a position to, to swim our best time. So, in that sense, it makes it pretty straightforward and preparing for it. Well, it's starting up to be a fantastic event this summer. Let's head back now to Alan in Coventry. So, uh, take a few tweets, hashtag PGSC14. Welcome, how are we going to say? You go on crying at Teesside, PG. So, take a look at our giant video board. A bit earlier on, Joey Clark with some more great tweets this time. Alongside me, there was a tremendous swimming all week. Not 
last couple of swings and she'll start to blow us out of the water. Fifty breaststroke final. Will it be Scotland or will it be England? Well, there's plenty of options for Scotland and quite a few for England as well. But the Scots do outnumber the English in this. We have uh, a Wales swimmer as well. The uh, Wales record holder, Rob Holderness, who said it yesterday in 28.27. But then we have Ewan Inglis of Scotland, Mark Tully of Scotland, Ross Murdoch. What is it with the breaststrokers in Scotland right now, Ross? They just seem to have a tradition that, you know, if you're, if you're a swimmer, you want to be a breaststroker in Scotland. And you see, um, you look down the list, there's so many Scots in this race. And certainly no, no more. Uh, no, no more than Ross Murdoch in lane number four. He's going to the University of Stirling, had a fantastic 100 metres the other night, and now he's back again on the 50 metres breaststroke. He is the British record holder, set that last week in the British uh, the Scottish Championships here in Glasgow. So now he'll be looking to see if he can lower that, but Adam Peter will be hot on his tails. He's only a couple of tenths behind, so expect the wind to come from either four or five. Is he cold? <laughs> It's just a cool customer, isn't he? You know, he's just, he just swaggers out, that's it. That's it, yeah. That's the way to... If you look like that, Bob, you take your tee shot all the time. Yeah, I do, I do it, but it doesn't impress anybody, sadly. <laughs> All right, the one to eight then. Rob Holder, there's a Millfield and Wales in one. Ewan Inglis of Edinburgh and Scotland in two. Mark Tully of East Lothian and Scotland in three. Ross Murdoch, the British record holder, going in lane number four. This is a full eight for you. Alan Beatty, we mentioned in five. Andrew Weatherit of Loughborough University in six. The Coast Club, Mark Campbell representing them in seven. And Joseph Wellstead of Sterling in lane number eight. I am so much looking forward to this. I do look forward to the breaststroke events with the men all the time now because the 200 is great the 100 was fantastic the other day wonder i just wonder if that british record could go 27.28 i'm going to put you on the spot now you're going to say yes or no whether he's going to go under that british record i can say yes i'm always optimistic i'm always upbeat about these things and i think ross murdoch can do it twice in a week why not adam peasy of course might have other ideas 27.51 compared to 27.28 their personal best. About 27 seconds worth of swimming here for Ross Murdoch, Adam Beatty and the rest in four and five. All about the start, all about how you get into your stroke and not trying to end up like a washing machine. Yeah, it looks like it is actually Andrew Weatherit from Loughborough University that had the best start over the opening 25 metres. But I expect Adam Peaty and Ross Murdoch, and it looks like it's neck and neck between lanes four and five. Adam Peaty looks like he's just edging out in front. Who's going to get it on the touch? And it is Adam Peaty in 27 points. Four, three, two, one hundreds of a second ahead of Ross Murdoch in 27.45 and Andrew Weatherit third in 27.64. So no British record. And everyone thought Ross Murdoch was going to get the touch. And it was actually the lad from City of Derby, Adam Peaty, getting the win. 27.43. So reversal of the 100 metres breaststroke where Ross won it and Adam was second. And now they're going to swap steps on the podium. And Adam will be standing proud as the British champion. Well done, Mel Marshall and his coach. What she's done with him over the last 12 months. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And this is something where he, you cannot panic in this situation. When you head into the wall, they both <laughs> lunge for it. And that's what two one hundredths of a second separating looks like. You can't see Adam Peaty there. He's just looking at Ross Murdoch. But what a swim. What a swim. And that's a huge PB from Adam Peaty. Or just slightly PB, sorry, by 0.1. And Ross Murdoch, a little bit slower than he was last week was still a very good time well in the world Ross Murdoch is number three Adam Peaty has moved up from number eight to number seven and we want to hear what he has to say about a new personal best and here he is Adam we saw an epic battle between you and Ross in the hundred meters earlier on this week today is your day how much does it mean to you to be on top of the podium um, a lot <laughs> yeah I mean uh, me and Ross always have good battles between each other 
And to be honest, like, it could have gone to either guy at the moment. And it's just so close between us. And it's going to be so good at Commonwealth Games. <laughs> and the 50s, I mean, they're over in a flash. How do you plan for these events? Um, well, yesterday I had a bit of a bit of a struggle, like, trying to get up to my speed. And because uh, I was just missing the water quite a lot. So I just looked at my coach and, like, she, she told me what to do. And I, I did it tonight, so... <laughs> You've just mentioned your coach. You train at City of Derby with Mel Marshall, who was a sprint specialist back in her day. Does that make a difference, having such high-quality coaching? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I couldn't really think of a better coach at the moment. I mean, she, she gives me what I need. And, like, you got, we've got two girls, Harriet Cooper and Danielle Lowe at the moment, and it's just working out great for me at the moment. So. And just talking about the Commonwealth Games ahead this summer, what's it like racing here at Toll Cross? Um, brilliant, actually, yeah. It's nice to get some uh, experience in this pool ready for the big game, so, yeah. Round of applause, everyone, for your 50-metre breaststroke champion. Thank you. Very, very diplomatic. Well done, Adam. He's English in Scotland, so you've got to be very careful. Just don't say the wrong thing. And I think he said it just about right, didn't he, with that uh, time. New personal best. So that's two of them in the top seven in the world. All right, it's not an Olympic event, but it is a Commonwealth Games event, and that is very important. And there is the call room. Give us an idea of what it's like sitting in there. At the moment, they can have about two or three minutes. We look at James Guy with those headphones. Can he find big headphones? Uh, you see, looking at James Guy with the white headphones, sitting down with the blue trainers on. The thing is, for him, he'll be very, very relaxed because this is not his main event. He knows he's swimming very well. And the rest of the guys are going to be looking towards James Guy like, what on earth are you doing in this call room? I'm the, I'm the butterfly specialist you're the freestyle specialist and you know people around poolside you know some of them are putting uh, they're certainly saying that james guy could win this event but the other guys will have something to say about that there's joe robot just swinging his arms getting ready but it's a nervous atmosphere and it's not it's not really a very pleasant atmosphere to be in and you know people just keep themselves to themselves just trying to go through their race plan and different people have different approaches so like i said joe robot is up there swinging his legs swinging his arms where the other swimmers are just sat there keeping all their energy to themselves and are going to release that when they get out onto poolside. That will be the last senior event of the program today. Before we get to that, though, we have the women's 100 metres freestyle final. Now, you have to say, Fran Halsall is the favourite. Red hot favourite to win this. She is the British record holder, 52.87. Big surprise if she doesn't win this, I can tell you. She's in lane number four, watching Harriet Cooper, City of Derby, which uh, I mentioned about from Adam Peaty in eight. Amelia Morn has moved to Aqua Sulis now. She is in lane number one. In seven, Grace Vertigant of Plymouth Leander. That is her. Then Rebecca Guy will be coming in in lane number two, representing the City of Manchester Aquatic. Personal best for her in the semi-final, 55.57. Amy Smith, training partner with Fran Housel and Loughborough, going in lane number six. Jess Lloyd of City of Manchester Aquatics in lane number three, so two Manchester swimmers side by side in two and three. City of Sheffield represented as they have been in a lot of finals this week. Great job being done by Russ Barber. Rebecca Turner, 54 7 1 is her best. But here next comes the British record holder set at the World Championships in Rome in 2009. Cool as a cucumber. Probably just need that jacket, it's not that cold in here, but nevertheless, that's her preparation. Steely determination. You can see through those goggles, you know that uh, she has her eyes set on another prize. Where she keeps all those medals, however, Ross, I do not know. That's <laughs> the one to eight. She has accumulated over the last eight, nine years so many medals. Yeah, she has all across different events. The only one she's missing is a, an Olympic medal. Uh, she had big hopes in 2012. Didn't go quite her way. But the way she's responded has been... Very, very positive, winning a bronze medal last year at the World Championships. Let's see how she gets on here in the women's 100 metres freestyle. There are some very fast Australians, by the way. And she will be gunning for them. Kate Campbell, Bronte Campbell, and Emma Keown have all done 53-4 or better. 
So Fran Housel, that is your marker. And as we expect, she has gone off like a rocket and already has a big advantage over everybody else. Somebody's trying to keep with her, but nobody really can at this stage. We haven't seen Fran Housel really sprint 100 meters freestyle so far this year. So going through the heats in the semi-final, she had a game plan and she only went to either 50% 50, 50 or 75%. This time she's going to go 100% for the whole of the 100 meters. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of time she's going to post. The nomination time for England is 54.09 and she can see now she's a country mile over the rest of the field. She's got to keep this together now over the last 15 metres. The rest of the field will be trying to catch her, but they're not going to do that. Fran Housel, last few metres in front. Can she get there? She's going to get there before everybody else by a long, long way. 54.12 and that takes her into virtually the top 10, just outside it actually, for the swims this year. I wonder how she feels about that. 52.87 is that British record as she set back in Rome. And uh, season's best, 54.07. So not quite as quick as she has been this season. It's been a little bit hit and miss for Fran this week. And probably just a slight side of the miss this time. Yeah, I think she would like to be disappointed. Yes, pleased that she's got the win. We're disappointed with the time. She wanted to go 54.09 or quicker. And uh, she's just missed that time. So 54.12 for Francesca Housel. Amy Smith, a training partner, 54.94 in second. Rebecca Turner, 55.40 in third. So the top four there in that event, all from the 2012 Olympic Games. So they've got that experience, probably showing it over the younger swimmers. It's nice to see that younger swimmers are making the finals and starting to press. Harriet Cooper came fifth just slightly behind one of our Olympians. We will hear from Fran Halsell right now. She tells us about how she won that last event and uh, perhaps we'll see what she thinks about that time. Here she is. Fran, you've had some really tough races this week, a lot of back-to-back -back swims. Just talk us through that performance. It was okay. Not quite what I wanted, but I got to do my best. And you mentioned before coming into this meet that you, you were going to use this to see what, what kind of focus you would have ahead of the summer. So has this helped at all? <laughs> it's been a long week, that's for sure. I've still got one swim to go, so I'm on 14 out of 15 and my body's just about holding up, but I'll go back and have a chat with coach and see what he thinks. You just mentioned your coach there. You train with the National Sprint Squad in Loughborough. How has that been? It's relatively new, so how's it been for you training with the top sprint guys? It's great fun. We have a great squad and I really enjoy it and we all work really hard so we've all got the same mindset and all want to achieve the same goals so it's perfect really and we have good fun in Loughborough. Great well thanks very much for talking to us Fran. Ladies and gentlemen round of applause please. Thank you. Well yeah I got the impression as she finished she can normally tell she does uh, wear a heart on her sleeve and gives you lots of uh, facial expressions which indicate just how she's feeling and there wasn't a big broad beaming smile when she's very happy it's a job pretty well done but not as well done perhaps as it could have been now this is an intriguing event 100 butterfly for men there's some butterfly swimmers in there and there are some renegades like mr james guy in lane number six what's he doing in there like, he is just a talented athlete and you know, so much on day one, breaking the British record in the 400 metres freestyle. Day two, won the 200 metres freestyle. This time not in a British record, but still a very good time. And now we've seen him come back and doing the 100 metres butterfly. Speaking to his coach, and you know, they wanted him to do the 200 metres butterfly, but it didn't quite fit in with his programme. So James turned around to them and said, well, I'll do the 100 instead then, shall I? And he, no, that's what he's doing. And some people think he's, he could win it. Um, well, he, he thinks he could win it. I know that much. Yeah, he's, he's, he's confident. He's He's cool, he's talented, but also is, is a lovely, he's a lovely guy, he's James Guy. And, uh, you know, certainly, you know, I say he's one for the future, but he's, he's, he's present now. He's, you know, he's the best we've got in Britain, and he came fifth at the World Championships last year. So hopefully he can really step on and, you know, not only are we going to be happy with him making finals, but hopefully he can start to progress and get onto the podium at the international meets, whether it's the, the World Championships or the Olympic Games. Starting to emerge from the courtroom now, Greg Bowman of Carnegie and Scotland. Personal best for him in the semi-final. In the upper 53s, Sam Horrocks also a BB for the City of Manchester Aquatic Swimmer to get into the top eight. 
Ryan Bennett will be next on ball deck. Normally associate Ryan with backstroke, but here he is going butterfly. He is a butterfly swimmer, but mainly knows a backstroker. Going in lane number seven. And here's the 100 butterfly swimmer for Great Britain at the Olympic Games in 2012. At Anthony James of Plymouth, the Anders had uh, trouble with that shoulder. And that's uh, rather kept him back and certainly kept his performances back a little bit in recent times. He'll be looking to try and shake off that problem. <laughs> They're smiling, James Guy. Big headphones. Looks like he owns this place. He just struts about. Not in an arrogant way, but in a way that knows and shows that he is pretty good. As is this man, actually, Joe Robot. Maybe a little bit too short for him, the 100 fly. We'll have to wait and see. And known over longer distances. Used to be a 400 IM, -er, now a 200 IM, -er, and a 200 butterfly swimmer. Adam Barrett of Loughborough University, certainly one that could go on to win this. And we'll see the Wales record holder next. Fastest qualifier for this final. Here's Tom Laxton of Loughborough. 52.40. Well, those records have been tumbling today. Ross, could we see a Wales record? We've seen plenty of English ones and a Scottish one along the way, but uh, Wales and Jazz, of course, have done the Wales record today because we had a second one. Yeah, could potentially see a, a Welsh record. The, the British record is Michael Rock on 51.41. But, you know, this this could go anyway. You've obviously got the experience in lane two from Anthony James and the Olympian. Joe Roebuck also from the Olympic Games. And then Tom Laxton, Adam Barrett, the, the more specialists for the 100 meters butterfly. And then this wild card in lane number six, who can pretty much do anything he wants. <laughs> well, I am intrigued to see what he can do in the 100 fly. He did a personal best in the semi final of 53.32. Gonna go quicker. He always seems to go quicker every time he gets in the pool, but he is not a butterfly specialist. Tom Laxon is, Adam Barrett is, Joe Roebuck has done 200 coming down to 100 here. Interesting to see which way they swim this. Interesting to see whether they are gonna look at James Guy and say, What have you got? Well, at the moment, a bigger man next alongside him, Adam Barrett, who's going very, very well in lane number five. Yeah, a lot of talk from Loughborough about Adam Barrett. He's been training really well over the winter. He's not quite gone his way this week so far, but this is his main event. So let's see how Adam Barrett goes up against the wild car, James Guy. Barrett is certainly attacking this one. Guy is trying to come back to him. Laxton's trying to come back to him. But you know what? Adam Barrett has this race won with 15 to go. But it may not be all up for the others yet. James Guy is coming back. And James Guy is coming back. But holding on is Adam Barrett right through to the wall. And James <laughs> Guy gets it. Would you believe it? James Guy gets it. And we get you, James Guy. We certainly do. 52.55. We did say watch out for this young man he is phenomenal and he has gone and done it again it is not his event he's a 200 and 400 freestyle swimmer comes into the 100 fly says thank you very much indeed you set the pace i'll finish it off and that's exactly what he does adam barrett 52 5 7 obviously rest assured is a personal best for guy and tom laxon but how did he do that and why did he do it oh, it's just ridiculous look how far behind is with five meters to go he nails his finish just watch this as he gets his hand oh that's two 100s of a second separating first and second and that's the best lane that he could have been in because tom lax um, adam barrett took it out over the first 75 meters and james guy just chipped away at him he has got that endurance from the 400 meters freestyle and uh, oh he just wherever he turns his hand to he just seems to it just seems to turn to gold he is number eight in the world with that time. 52.55. Get out of here. Adam Barrett, 52.57. Tom Laxon, 52.75. The whole of swimming has just been turned upside down again by this young man. We want to hear from him. He's got so much to say. Here is James Guy. James, a fantastic... Is this on? Okay. James, a fantastic race from you there. You really clawed it back down that final 50 metres. What was your plan going into that? 
that was exactly the plan, trying to go out as fast as I can and hold on really because I knew they got the boys would go fast out and try and bring it back as hard as I could. Now we've seen you dominate in the freestyle events this week. Was Butterf Butterfly always on the radar for you? No, not really. I mean, it's nice to have a bonus swim and I wasn't really expecting that, but it's great to be up there with the big boys. And just mentioning the freestyle, you broke Dave Davis's five-year-old 400-metre freestyle record earlier on in the week. Has that given you a big boost coming into today? Yes, it has. I mean, I never expected to do that and go 3.45-1, but yes, it definitely did. And we all want to know, what have you been doing in training recently that's brought about these performances? Training hard. <laughs> now, you said you came into this week wanting to dominate, and that's exactly what you've done. Well done, James. Thank you. commercial break and review the action of the day. We will do likewise and also bring you the junior finals. i tell you what, this has been a superb day because every time you think it can't get any better, something superb happens, something unexpected happens. I suppose in a way, you know, James Guy Willie was not that much of a surprise. He told me he was going to do it last night and I should listen because when that young guy talks these days, he's quite right. He does do what he says he's going to do. He, he must be an absolute dream to coach because you know, his coach must say, do you want to do this? And he'd be like, yeah, sure, let's go for it and let's actually do it better than I did the week before, the session before. And let's go to this competition and let's do something that nobody else has done. Let's go and win the 100 fly and the 400 metres freestyle and the 200 metres freestyle. And I spoke to his coach and said, well, what about the, the 100 metres freestyle? And he said, no, nah, doesn't really suit his stroke, so we're not doing it. So they obviously know, they obviously know what works and you know what he can do. And like I said, he, he, he wants them to do the 200 metres butterfly, but it wasn't going to fit in the programme. So they, they chose the, the second option of the 100 fly and won that as well. Right, on your screen you can see the swimmers coming onto pool deck for the junior 100 metres breaststroke final. I'll give you the one to eight because we won't be able to bring it to you on screen. Jesse Foster of Aquasulis in England in one. Emma Chittleberg of Warren de Bars in lane number two. In three, Casey Matz of City of Salford. Four, Emma Kane of Millfield School. Davencio excels Abby Wood in lane number five. Laura Marzolini of Norwich in lane six. Megan Morrison, City of Leicester, seven. And lane eight is Erin Robertson of South Ayrshire. Well, there's some PBs in the semi-final. Abby Wood did one of them, 112.47. Emma Kane with a 111.38. So on paper at least, and we can't go by that as we saw from the previous race, Emma Kane is the fastest from Millfield. And of course, James Guy is from Millfield. So will we have back-to-back -back victories for Millfield School here? I would not bet against it. And Emma Kane is coached by Ewan Dale at Millfield, a former Olympian, 400 medley swimmer. James Guy is not in their group, but still under the head coach of Joel Finch. So, fantastic training and coaching down in Millfield, and they're doing a great job with all of their swimmers. There's also Abby Wood, who's qualified this week for the European Juniors, and it is lane number three that's taking this out. And Katie Mance from City of Salford, and she does it in 33 point. 0-3, second place is Emma Kane, and third place is Jesse Foster from lane number one. Let's hope they are inspired by that fantastic British record earlier on, uh, sorry, English record for earlier on from Sophie Taylor. 
Brilliant stuff it was from her. Now can they uh, show us what they can do for the future in this race? I think they're going to do that because we're watching lane three and lane four. Katie Matz and Emma Kane. Emma Kane on the nod looks to have this. It is going to be another Millfield victory. Emma Kane's going to get to the wall first and does in 1.11.15. That's the second personal best of the day for Emma Kane. Second is Katie Matz in 1.11.97. Abby Wood, 1.12.50. I'll run through the others so you don't get them on screen. 1.12.67 for Jesse Foster. Fifth, Aaron Robertson in 1.13.18. Sixth, Laura Marzolini in 1.13.51. And in seventh place, Megan Morrison, 1.13.71. Emma Trittleberg, 1.14.49. So Emma Kane winning that by about three quarters of a second over Katie Matz. Yeah, it's one of those swims where she didn't panic when the rest of the swimmers went out fast. She kept a cool and knew that she had the back end in there to overroll the rest of the, the field. Uh, she did exactly that and winning by over a second in the end. And a fantastic swim from Emma Kane and a fantastic evening from Millfield yet again. Yeah, they're doing something right at Millfield School, producing the future champions and producing champions of today. Great swim from Emma. And we will move on to the junior 200 meters butterfly final. Representatives from Western Supermare, from Plymouth Leander, from City of Peterborough, from City of Sheffield, from Cockermouth, from City of Leeds, twice. And Kelly College in lane number eight. So Evan King will go for Western Supermare in one. Laura Stevens of Plymouth Leander in two. Catherine Brown, City of Peterborough, did a personal best to get into this final. She's in three. Fastest qualifier, though, Isabel Grant, our city of Sheffield, 214.60, a season's best. Personal best, 214.15. Anna Newland of Cockermouth, again a personal best setter, en route to the final from Cockermouth. Then uh, two of the Leeds swimmers, Amelia Kleins in six, and Georgia Coates in lane number seven. George Coates back again. She uh, swam earlier on to 17.98 is her personal best. And Chloe Barrow of Kelly College will go in lane number eight. Well, we certainly need a few more 200 butterfly swimmers to come through. This is the new generation, the 98-99 brigade, who hopefully will reach uh, fruition in terms of their senior career in about three or four years' time. Yeah, we've seen Georgia Coates tonight already doing the 800 metres freestyle. I mean, we have mentioned at the beginning of the programme about having you know, the, the difficult swims that are in the programme. The 800 free is there, so is the 200 to fly and she's doing them both in the same session so you know she must just love the pain of swimming and doing the most difficult events in the program looking for this one to unfold again with normally with the juniors there's not a great deal to choose between them in terms of time Isabel Grant 214 this morning through to 219 for Chloe Barrow of Kelly College, 219.48 for Evan King. That was a new personal best, so uh, quite a few personal bests from earlier on. Let's see what can happen as we look at the junior 200 meters butterfly final. Once again, those clubs represented Western Supermare, Plymouth, Peterborough, Sheffield, Cockermouth, two from Leeds, and Kelly College. And some natty outfits as well. Hmm. Blue and black, maroon, orange. What's this, Hanjuri? Close up on Isabel Grant of the city of Sheffield. Fastest qualifier in 214.6. Well, it's tough. We talked about it being tough for the men. So to about find how that last 50 is agonizing because suddenly that uh, big animal jumps on your shoulder. Normally an elephant, could be a giraffe, could be anything as sizable you want to talk about, but uh, suddenly you are joined by a big presence and a big weight on your shoulders in the last 50. Should be reasonably comfortable, says somebody who's never done a butterfly swim until 150, and then it just gets a bit awkward after that. <laughs> yeah, it's 
Butterfly is all about rhythm, and as soon as you lose that rhythm, it just becomes so much more harder. And as long as they can keep that rhythm going, and you know they can keep the speed up, they'll be on for a good swim. It does actually look like now it is lane number eight that's taking this out from Kelly College. Chloe Barrow turning in 29.88, slight six one hundreds quicker than the Kleins in lane five, City of Leeds. But it is Chloe Barrow that's extending her lead now down this second fifty of the butterfly. Uh, it's going to touch the wall in 103.02. So we saw the, the seniors turning in around about 101, and the juniors are doing it in 103. Don't quite get this. The slowest qualifier in lane eight is leading the way here. So was she just having them on? Was she just taking us all for a ride earlier on today? Or has Chloe Barrow suddenly found some form that hitherto she hasn't shown? Can she keep this going? This is the toughest bit, being a front runner in a 200 fly, because you know you've got to keep it going. You know full well there's going to be plenty of swimmers coming back, and the two lead swimmers are Amelia Kleins and Georgia Coates trying to catch her. But at the moment, they're not catching Chloe Barrow. She is leading 130. 93 and at the moment there's about well one one hundred between her and Anna Newland. Surely she's going to reel her in over the last 50. Yeah, this is Anna New Anna Newland. It was turning in second there, but it does actually look like now it is lane number four. Isabel Grant from the city of Sheffield is starting to take the lead. Chloe Barrow starting to now go backwards. You talked about that elephant, and that elephant has jumped on her back. But it's the swimmers in the middle of the pool, lanes four and five. They're really in head to head as we come into the final five meters. Grant against Kleins. Kleins going to get there, I think, just in front of Isabel Grant, and she does by two tenths of a second. 2.13.43 for Amelia Kleins, and that's a big new personal best couple. The seconds under what she's done before. Second place is Isabel Grant of Sheffield. Alan Newlands in the 2.14.83. So uh, good pace making by Chloe Barrow, but she fell away at the end. Nonetheless, she's still done a two second PB. Yeah, that's what she had to do. She went out and she she led it for the majority of the race, but then just faded towards the end. And the other girls in the middle of the pool took on the mantle and drove to the wall and been rewarded with PBs. Left, right and centre in that event. Isabel Grant coming second in 2.13.65. Her personal best before that was 2.14.15. So she's also done her personal best, a fantastic swim. And Georgia Coates finished in sixth. That 800 must have taken a toll on her in that event. Yeah, pretty much. Just wasn't uh, quite the finish that uh, she would have liked, or indeed the race she would have liked, but she has had a very tiring 800 earlier in the session, so I think we can forgive her for that. Even so, it's a personal best, so it's the fastest that she has ever been. So, uh, nonetheless, even though she wasn't maybe quite up with the front runners, she still improved on her best time before now, so well done to her. Good to see and pretty much all the juniors did in that race. Right, still to come, quite a few junior finals. Actually, we have another three to bring you. Men's 50 metres breaststroke final, which we only have four in that. I'll bring you Charlie Atwood of Taunton Dean, Jack Burton of Plymouth, Harry Ackland of Plymouth, and Daniel Lim of Warrender. That will be followed by the Junior 100 Freestyle Final for women. We'll give you a full contingent of eight for that, as we will on the Junior 100 Butterfly Final. And uh, if you are with any of these clubs, just now for your swimmers later, City of Salford Team Ipswich with Jake Tyson, who did an age group record today in getting into the final. Three, John Slater of Basingstoke. In four will be uh, Luke Greenbank and the Davencio and Borough of South End, City of Sunderland and Beckenham, all represented in the final of the 100 butterfly. That's yet to come. Coming on the pool deck after we've got a little middle story before we get to that. And it's the 100 breaststroke final, so take a bow, Sophie Taylor. Absolutely incredible swim from Sophie Taylor. I was watching the, the clock in the corner of the screen, it looked like it tipped over onto the 108. But as it stopped, it actually was 107.08. So, cracking swim from Sophie Taylor, and still only 18 years of age. Yeah. Molly Renshaw, very good bronze medal. She is a 200 specialist, Molly. Did come second to Sophie Taylor a couple of nights ago. But she'll be happy with the bronze medal there on the 100 metres. Like I said, because that's not her main event, but she has been working very hard in the gym to put some muscle on. And 
work on her speed. Corey Scott is second. Hopefully all these, all three of these girls can move this event forward and uh, push Sophie Taylor all the way. 108.77 for Corey Scott, 108.94 for Molly Renshaw. But just listen to this, and hopefully she'll get the applause that she deserves because this is a new British record for Sophie Taylor. What an incredible week. The best time in the 200. Best time in the 100, 107.08. And what is great now, Ross, and this is a very important thing from GB and for England, obviously, this year, but looking down the line for the World Championships and Europeans and the Olympics in 2016, the medley relay. We've always had the components of the other three strokes. We've had the great freestylers, we've had the great butterfly swimmers, and we've had the great backstroke swimmers. What we have lacked is somebody who can do a 106 to 107 on a regular basis. It looks like Sophie Taylor is going to be that swimmer. Yeah, if you look at in terms of the world stage, you know, the top three or four countries all have a 104 breaststroker. Um, that's something that we need to start to produce. And, and Sophie Taylor now is, is on that road, uh, very nearly went 66. So if we can get it to, in a relay to get down to 65, that's, you know, we're going to be in the mix because you, when you've got the likes of Fran House or doing the freestyle leg and you know, Gemma Lowe doing the, the butterfly and either Lauren Quigley doing the backstroke, you're actually starting to form a, a very, or, or, or actually George Davis on the backstroke, you're starting to form a good quartet that can actually deliver on the international stage. And that's something we haven't had in, in the past. So we need to get that breaststroke down to as close to 104 as possible just to be able to compete with the rest of the world. Another medal ceremony on the way. So Sophie Taylor has collected her gold, her second of the week, the 200 and the 100 double. And on they come to Paul Deck. Some more smiles, more happy faces, because the 200 butterfly recipients of their medals are here. And look in the center. That is Amy Wilmot, who has gone to a time that was so far out of her comfort zone today. It's unbelievable. We're talking about somebody in the 210 who suddenly finds just about three to four seconds. That is, in an event like this, not quite unparalleled, but very unusual in the final. Yeah, I just don't know where it came from. You know, she's just, at her age as well. Hey, the only way you can you can really reason with it is because she doesn't do that event very often. Um, you know, but her age, you, know, you don't see those big jumps. You normally see that with age group swimmers, but with her being in her twenties, you know, it's uh, a massive jump. But you know, that's that's something she needs to work on. She needs to work on her 200 meters butterfly to help her 400 meters IM. Because if you've got that in your locker and you can go out fast on the, the fly and it not affect the rest of the 300 of the IM. So that's obviously something that she has focused on and it's, you know, <laughs> it paid off tonight. And then the Sheridan in third, by the way, for Loughborough, Bath's Tilly Gray in second. They're both in the 210s, but 207.97. A massive improvement for Amy Wilmot and indeed the time for consideration for the Commonwealth Games. I think it's uh, no doubt she will be in that team. Question of which event she will be doing, because she's uh, basically a foreign diameter, what we thought she was until today. We might have to reappraise that after that 200 butterfly swim. Really good swim, 207.97 for Amy. And well done to the other two from Bath and Loughborough as well. One thing I will say that Amy Wilmot is you know, starting to, to get into that world class in the 400 medley. Quite a little bit way off on the 200 butterfly. So you know, I think she should, well, she even said in an interview that she's still going to focus on the medley. And that is going to be you know, one that she's going to really approach over the next couple of years. But if she can knock in times like that on, on the butterfly, and even the say if she enters the backstroke and, and starts to improve the backstroke, it's exactly what Hannah Miley did on her breaststroke. Her breaststroke was the weakest event, and she worked hard at it, she raced at it, and now it's one of the strongest events in her medley. So she's, she's used a, a negative into a positive, and that's exactly what Amy Wilmot's doing. Well, we gave you a little lead into it. Here they are, the Junior 50 breaststroke finalists. We only have four of them. They feel a bit isolated, don't they? Couldn't find enough to get you eight lanes occupied. Oh, sorry, this is the uh, medal ceremony. I thought we were going to get another uh, junior breaststroke final, but no, no, no. This, these are bigger boys. 
What's great is actually these were junies uh, only uh, a couple of years ago. If that, uh, certainly Ross Murdoch and Adam Peaty. And it's, it's great to see that they are delivering from a junior stage into the senior stage now. And it was, it was Leeds last year at the Inter British Gas International that we saw the emergence of the likes of Adam PT, James Guy. And now, 12, fast forward 12 months, and not only are they challenging for medals, but they're actually winning the British Championship. So it's, you know, it's, it's great to see that. And you know, hopefully what we're seeing now here in Glasgow, in the junior events, they'll be into the seniors next year. Great rivalry already between that young man from Scotland, the British record holder still not to be overlooked, Ross Murdoch on the second platform, but here comes Adam Peaty. Perhaps he wasn't quite ready for the World Championships last year. The boy is certainly getting ready in the 50, the 100, especially, and the 200 as well. He's going through the card, is Adam Peaty. Better known, of course, as 100 now, but the 200 will certainly be in his repertoire, the 50 most certainly is, as we found out today, with the first or best for him. Absolutely thrilled to add a medal to his collection. Andrew Weatherall getting the bronze medal, and uh, Ross Murdoch for the silver, Adam Peaty. The city of Derby with the gold in the 50 breaststroke, which will hopefully lead us nicely on to the junior final. I'm sure they're waiting in the wings. They've been waiting quite some while, have the uh, four finalists for that. Door opens. Come on, let them in, let them in. They're, they're raring to go. They'll be eating on raw meat very shortly if they don't get a chance to swim. Yeah. Here they come. Charlie Atwood, Jack Burton, Harry Ackland, and Daniel Lim are the swimmers in this one. And knock, knock, who's there? Here they come. It's actually uh, the South West versus Scotland here. In Torton Dean, Plymouth, Plymouth, and then Warrender. So, three people from the Southwest, and uh, Daniel Lim from Warrender Bath in Edinburgh. So, Daniel Lim goes to six. Charlie Atwood of Taunton will go to three. Jack Burton of Plymouth. They should really get some sponsorship on these headphones, shouldn't they, really? They're all coming on full deck with uh, some tunes playing. As indeed is Harry Ackland. Not hearing the cheers of the crowd at all, absorbed in whatever music they've chosen for the junior 50 meters press stroke final. Here they all are. And uh, the fastest on paper will be the swimmer in lane number four, 29.45, Jack Burton. Charlie Atwood of 29.46. Harry Ackland has been in the 29s, but they've all been in the 29s. Nobody yet has escaped the 29s into the 28s. They are front on. Nice shot of lanes three, four, five, and six. Charlie Atwood in three for Taunton Dean. Jack Burton, Plymouth, four. Harry Ackland, Plymouth, five. And Warren de Bards and Scotland for Daniel Lim in lane number six. So their entry times and indeed the personal bests are very, very similar. And they're all in the line. It looks like it is actually Jack Burton that's just starting to stroke out in front. Harry Atkins is trying to track him all the way, but now it is Jack Burton that's got a little bit of a lead. Has come into the final five metres. It is going to be Jack Burton that wins this junior 50 metres fresh stroke, and he does in a time of 28.92. Second place going to Harry Ackland in 29.23. And third is Charlie Atwood. So, how big a drop down is that for the winner? Well, it's quite a big drop down. Actually, he's in the 28s for the first time. 29.45 was his previous best. He's gone to 28.92 with that win. And it's Plymouth 1 2 in the 50 press. So, surprise, surprise, because they have the world champion female in the uh, 100 breaststroke and the Olympic champion. And of course, breaststroke is really flourishing in Plymouth. It certainly is. What, now how great must it be to, to look over the lane and see the world record holder and the Olympic champion training next to you. It's absolutely inspiring. And these guys are hopefully going to follow in her footsteps in Ruta. Yeah, we've got a long way to go yet. 
They have, but that's a big start for Burton and for Ackland. 28-9-2, 29-2-3 for those two with Charlie Atwood, 29-7-3. Daniel Lim with 30.04. Another medal ceremony, I think. About to take place. Here we go. Got uh, two more finals to bring to you yet. Junior finals, they are. 100 meters freestyle. Uh, okay, so it's been introduced and they've got medal ceremony to go. So <laughs> that's confused the people on. That's. Okay. Yeah, it is the senior 100 freestyle medal ceremony. Turner picking up the bronze medal for 100 metres freestyle for women. I mentioned it a lot already that City and Sheffield are having a fantastic open meet, or British Championship, should I say. And that's another medal to add to the collection. And this is the place that Amy Smith has often been second fiddle behind Francesca Housel. She did manage to beat her one year, but the majority of the time she's been playing catch up to Francesca Housel. She's a quality swimmer. Been to the Olympic Games in 2012, the Commonwealth Games and the World Championships as well. But there was no stopping Francesca Housel. She said she was disappointed at the end of it. She wanted to go under the qualification time or the nomination time, should I say, for Team England. She just missed that and she would be disappointed with that. But she still picks up the gold medal. It's been a real curious egg of a week, though, isn't it, Ross, for her? There, there, there's been some sparks and some really good swims by Fran, and others where she's come away thinking, well, that wasn't quite as good as it can be. At the moment, it's very much work in progress with her. I was just about to say that it's work in progress, and that's when you're going to get hit and misses. And, you know, it's, it's great to see that you know, what she's working on is, is working. But it's going to take time, you know. You know she's been swimming for such, such a long time, and she's been swimming internationally for the best part of 10 years. So to try and change things now it's going to be hard but she's dedicated and she will try and change it and she will get you know, the results that she deserves because of the work ethic that she puts in quite a few staying behind for the two remaining junior finals and indeed more medal ceremonies brown house again picking up another gold amy smith with a silver, she's probably getting fed up with those silver collections now. <laughs> she's looking at Fran Housel, she goes, come, come on, let me have one, let me have one one day. As you say, it doesn't happen very often at all. But uh, that's a certain Mr. James Guy who's just stolen the 100 butterfly away from real butterfly swimmers. Yeah, it's just <laughs> incredible race. Uh, you know, just bided his time. And any time he led was right on the touch. And he won by two one hundredths of a second. Of Adam Barrett, but it is Thomas Laxton from Loughborough University. He's going to be picking up the, the bronze medal. Well, she's a record holder. We'll be looking over at uh, James Guy and going, Come on, boy, I don't even know who you are. Well, of course he does, but not in this event he doesn't. And I doubt very much we'll see James Guy do the 100 fly very often, to be honest. No, but it's you know something that he's going to be... Yeah, you know, we're focusing on now that he can, he can do absolutely anything he wants. And it's, it's going to be frightening, because if he knows he can do that, then, you know, when he walks out onto, onto the pool side of the Commonwealth Games or the World Championships or the Olympic Games, he has no fear whatsoever. He knows that anything he touches turns to gold. So, fantastic swim, fantastic week. He deserves a little bit of a rest now. Yeah, another one for his collection. And uh, that is a burgeoning collection for a man who was fifth at his World Championship debut in the 400 freestyle last year. And seemingly anything he sets his mind to, he can do. 200 freestyle, 400 freestyle. That's a, that's a kind of, um, how do we call it? A fun event. Is there a, such a thing? Well, for him it is, 100 butterfly. And he beats the established butterfly swimmers to get the gold, does James Guy. What's interesting about James Guy is he has videos 
on each of his competitors. Has and he, he? He watches That's them. Spooky. And, you know, he knows Sun Yang's splits on every single race that he's done. He knows his turn times, he knows his start time, he knows his first 25 meters on his 1500. He knows absolutely everything. And there's not many, I, I don't know a swimmer that has gone into that much detail on their competitors that knows exactly what they'll be doing. And, you know, that's why it's so frightening that he has got that level of dedication and work ethic. That he, I, I can't even put into words how talented he is and how far he could potentially go. Well, he didn't bring his anorec with him today, fortunately, as we prepare for the junior 100 meters freestyle final. I'll give you the one to eight. They're coming in in uh, outside in that lane order, but Katie Matz will be in one for City of Salford. Two is Darcy Deakin of City of Sheffield, Georgina Boyle of Chelsea of Westminster in three, Magdalena Seigert of the City of Leeds. Mari Davis of Swin Gwynedd, the performance team down in Wales. Hannah Featherston of Sedgefield and District in six. Rebecca Danning of Swansea University in seven. And Lucy Oxbrow of Team Ipswich goes in lane number eight. Best time for Magdalena Sagan was in the lead up to this. 57 2 3. So looking down the list here, there's one, two, three, four who have done 57s. And there's a few 58s in there as well. But again, with the junior finals, very often it's very, very tight. And sometimes, as we've seen in this, we get a few little surprises. Yeah, so they do. Uh, some of these girls have done lots of races this week. We've still got one more day of the British Gas Swimming Championships. Some of these swimmers will be finished after tonight, and they want to go out with a bang. Who's going to go out with the biggest bang? Magdalena Seigert in four. Ari Davis of Swim Gwynedd Performance in Wales. PBs from both of them in the lead-in to this final. So, City of Salford, Sheffield, Chelsea and Westminster, City of Leeds, Swing, Gwynedd, Sedgefield and District, Swansea and Team Ipswich all represented here. And at 25, well, maybe only one side dropped Lucy Oxbrow in eight, but she's got time to catch up. All the other seven are in a line. Yeah, that's right. It looks like it is actually just lane number four that's edging out in front and it is going to be... Raglan Sion from the City of Leeds, 21st in 27.59. And it's Rebecca Darling from Swansea University, second in 27.80. That's joint second, actually, the halfway mark. Very good scrap, very good race. A couple of uh, yellow caps showing here. City of Leeds in lane four, and I think that Magdalena Sagan has probably got just about enough. Murray Davis is trying to close her down, and is closing her down. It's very tight between four and five, but I think it's Leeds. It is Magdalena Sagan, 57.13, wins it by 0.17 of a second. Third place going to Georgina Boyle, and fourth to Hannah Featherson. She just, just about held on for a new person personal best by a tenth of a second. That's two PBs in the space of less than 24 hours. Yeah, it's also Mary Davis. 57.30 is also a new personal best. And Georgina Ball also going 50, oh, just outside of her personal best, sorry. But very, very close to it for the bronze medal. So the fastest two in that, both setting PBs. It's great to see that they are posting personal best times in the final in the junior women's 100 meters freestyle. 57-1-3 for Magdalena Seigen and Murray Davis. 57-3 in second place there. Both very good swims and a very, very exciting finish in that junior final. Last up, it is the 100 butterfly. Ben Carey, Jake Tyson, John Slater, Luke Greenback. I'll give you the clubs as we go along. Kevin Wallbank, Spy, Barton Towley, Adam Taylor, Luke Gunning, and uh, Salford, Ipswich, Basingstoke, Cockermouth, Deventio, Borough Southend, City of Sunderland, and Beckenham are the clubs that are represented here. Last final of the afternoon. It is the junior men's 100 meters butterfly final. And no fewer than five swimmers did personal best to get into this final. Yeah, we've also seen Luke Greenbank 
tonight already. Also only today, and he's had a busy program. Luke Gunning in lane number eight. His brother is swims for Stockport Metro, had a fantastic week. Setting PBs left, right and centre. That's Mike Gunning. It's great that they're having to set PBs to, to make these finals. It makes them swing fast in the morning and then come back and try and deliver in the evening. And that's exactly what you have to do on the international stage. You have to be on your personal best in the morning if you want to get to a semi-final or a final, and then you have to come back and deliver again if it's a semi-final to get into the final. Or if it's the final, you've got to be fighting out to get those medals. So it's a good learning curve. It's great that the juniors are getting the opportunity to race in the evening. Lots of times in the past, they haven't had that opportunity. So some of them have been finished by half past nine in the morning. I've not really been able to show exactly what they can do. Well, they can show what they can do in this final. I think we're going to see quite a few more personal bests being achieved here. Good spread of clubs as well. One of those uh, rare occasions where we don't actually have one of what was uh, formerly called the ITCs. These are all the juniors coming through the smaller clubs. Salford, Ipswich, Basingstoke, Cockermouth, Deventio, Borough South End, City of Sunderland and Beckenham. All of them are hoping that uh, in a short while they'll be standing on that medal platform trying to get there. One, two, and three. 100 butterfly. Luke Greenbank with uh, personal best this morning of all the fives 55.55. Seen a lot of swimmers do two personal bests in short space of time that's what this event is all about what this meet is all about and uh, we're going to look for somebody to go flying from the outside lane that's what seems to be happening a lot this week and adam taylor is the man this time yeah and also a fantastic start from luke greenbank using the whole 15 meters underwater off the start it does look like it is carry from city oh no sorry adam taylor in lane number seven he's going to turn first and he does in 25.14 so this is the event we saw james guy take in that sneaky win and it looks like Adam Taylor's looking very strong with the rest of the field now starting to close up on him and it is Luke Greenbank that's starting that charge he is saying that charge and Adam Taylor's trying to go with him as he can Cockermouse Luke Greenbank goes to the front joined now by Kevin Wallbank but Adam Taylor who's gone from the front is going to try and hold on right to the end this is a tremendous swim if he can get there to the wall first he has he led that virtually all the way Taylor. I thought at one stage he was going to get overtaken and overhauled, but he held on right until the end. 55.41. That's a new personal best. As you might imagine, it was a kiss for Ross Davenport from Mel Marshall, as we see the conclusion of that one. 55.41. That came across in beautiful stereo. In second place, Lou Greenbank and Kevin Warbank. I hope your wife's not listening. <laughs> I'm sure she will be. But no, well, a fantastic swim. Uh, he just let it out from the very first moment all the way to that. The rest of the field were catching him up every single stroke, but he'd done enough over the opening 70 to 75 metres to hang on to that win. Absolutely brilliant. Well done, Adam Taylor. It's a PB for you. And a cracking swim. Wasn't it just tremendous stuff from Adam Taylor? 55-4-1. Luke Green back in second at 55.55 there. That's all the runners and riders and their times. Adam Taylor winning it by 14 one hundredths right from the front and at the front right at the end in the junior 100 meters butterfly final. Well, take a Welsh record, take a British record and take a handful of personal bests. And there you have it. It's day five here of the British Gas Swimming Championships 2014. What an amazing, amazing evening of swimming action that has been tonight. A highlight for me has to be Sophie Taylor. What an incredible swim she performed there for us here at Tollcross International Swimming Centre in Glasgow. Now, let's just take a look at her swim. So strong, so powerful. And from the word go, there was absolutely...
absolutely no stopping that lady tonight. We've seen some great swims from her this week. You can just see her there on screen. Look how powerful she is in full force. That's what we are excited to see at the Commonwealth Games 2014 in this pool and of course gaining that British record. That's what we like to see and that's what we've seen tonight. Strong, fierce action from these ladies and gents competing here and we've got some incredible up and coming juniors which is what we've seen the, the finals tonight as well from the juniors. Great opportunity for them to be here at the Commonwealth Pool as well and really be inspired by all of the top, top swimmers which we have seen in this pool tonight and for the other days of this event. So tomorrow it is our final day of the British Gas Swimming Championships which I'm very sad to say about but tomorrow morning we have the women's 400 meter freestyle. That's going to be an incredible event if Jazz Carlin goes anything like she went tonight in the 800. And we have the SM10, that's the 200 meters individual medley for the women and to wrap it off, the 200 meters individual for the men. So that's tomorrow morning. The action is going to be kicking off at 5 to 9 with myself and the lovely Carrie Ann Payne. So make sure you stay tuned for the live stream tomorrow morning. That's 5 to 9. Make sure you are here.